And now for the most famous words in auto racing, Mr. Jim White. Gentlemen, start your engine. Well, Lord one, I'm Jerry Punch, and we are glad to have you with us today here at Talladega. You know, if you were to take the NASCAR record book and flip to the page on most competitive races, you would learn very quickly that four of the five most competitive races in the history of the sport have happened right here at Talladega. Back in 1984, we saw a NASCAR record 75 lead changes, and two years later, over half the field, 26 drivers, led this race. Now, given the rule changes this week and what we're hearing from the garage area, they hope that the headlines tomorrow around this country will read, at Talladega, grown men use slingshots to bring the fans to their feet. Well, let's hear what our experts think. Let's bring in our champions and my heroes. Here's Benny Parsons and Ned Jerry. You know, since 1969, they've been racing at Talladega. They've averaged over 35 lead changes per race. But you got to go back to 1989 to find a number larger than 35. So the last 11 years, 20 25 lead changes. That's what NASCAR is trying to do is to try to increase drag, make pass a little bit easier so we can see a lot more lead changes. And I think we will, Ben. If the happy hour yesterday was any indication. We saw a lot of three and four wide drafting out there, and also it was easier for the drivers to pass. You know, in the past, on the last lap, you wanted to be in the lead, at least for the last five or six years. But now they say that the lead car is going to be the sitting duck. And we'll see at the end of this race. Well, guys, if anticipation by fans and drivers alike means anything, this one today will be one to remember. I hope you put seat belts on your sofa because now it's time to strap it at home for hopefully the ride of a lifetime, Talladega Super Speedway style. As ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, once again brings you NASCAR. Today, live from the world's fastest stock car facility, 500 miles of high bank, high speed action. Take a look at this massive facility, 2,500 acres, Talladega Super Speedway, 2.66 miles around. The front straightaway, 4,300 feet. That's because of the tri oval on the back stretch, a straight 4,000 foot drag strip. The corner is banked at 33 degrees, the triangle 18, and the straightaway, the back straightaway, just two degrees. Let's take a look now at our Walmart Tire and Lube Express starting grid and show you that front row Joe picked up his first pole of the year, his sixth of his career, and the second year in a row he is set on the pole for this event at Talladega. He is flanked by awesome Bill, Bill Elliott, who started second here back in April. Back in row two. Rookie of the Year candidate Dale Earnhardt Jr., a two-time winner, but yet the win on a plate track will be inside of row two. And Jerry Nidu brings the Michael Hollick and Chevrolet to the outside. We'll be riding along on the Budweiser onboard camera with Dale Earnhardt Jr. throughout the afternoon. Back in row three, it's an old Joe Gibbs row. Sensational sophomore Tony Stewart has the Home Depot Pontiac, winner of two of the last three events in NASCAR. And beside him is teammate and current Winston Cup points leader Bobby Labonte, the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. And we'll be riding along on the Circuit City onboard camera with Bobby all afternoon. All right, our next row, Kenny Wallace on the inside, looking for her first Winston Cup win in the Square D Chevrolet. And beside him, Jeff Gordon will go to the back of the pack after a problem having to go to a backup car yesterday. How about the oldest driver in the field, Dave Marcus, 59 years of age, brings the real tree Chevy inside of row five. And beside him, the first of five Noble Five candidates is Steve Park. And in row number six, it's an all Robert Gates racing with Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett. Making up row six, row seven, we see Stacy Compton and Ken Schrader. In row number eight, John Andretti and Kevin LePage. Row number nine, we see Terry Labadi, a former winner here, former Winston Cup champion, and Michael Waltrip. Row 10, Bobby Hamilton and Dale Earnhardt, the defending champion of the Winston 500. On the inside of row 11 is Ward Burton. On the outside, Jimmy Spencer. And we ride along with Ward Burton this afternoon, the Husqvarna onboard camera. In row 12, on the inside is Johnny Benson. On the outside, Mike Skinner. And Skinner will let us ride around with him on board the Lowe's Chevrolet. 
on the inside of row 13, Elliot Sadler. And the fastest qualifying second round, Ricky Craven on the outside. In row 14 on the inside, the Valvoline Ford, Mark Martin, Rich Bickle on the outside. And once again, Mark Martin allows us to be on board with him in his Babylon Ford. And in row 15, on the inside, Rick Mast. On the outside, Ted Musgrave. Back in row 16, Steve Grissom drives the Hot Wheels Pontiac flanked by Sterling Marlin, the Coors Light Chevrolet. Back in row 17, rookie Dave Blaney, alongside three-time Winston Cup champion Darrell Walter, his 55th and final start at Talladega. Next row, rookie Scott Pruitt in the tied Ford, flanked by leading rookie of the year contender Matt Kenseth. In the next row, Jeff Burton will have the Sitco Super Guard Ford in 37th starting spot. And beside him is Rusty Wallace, the Miller Lite Ford. Well, right along with Jeff Burton on the Parts Plus onboard camera. And of course, Rusty Wallace, the onboard camera, the Miller Lite Ford roof camera for Rusty looking for his first restrictor plate race win. Next row, Chad Little making his final start in the John Deere Ford. And beside him, Jeremy Mayfield in the Mobile One Ford for Roger Penske. We'll ride along with Jeremy from the back of the pack in 40th starting spot and watch him come through traffic throughout the day. And the final starter today, Robert Presley will start 41st in the Jasper Engines Ford, flanked by Brett Bodon in the Ralph Supermarkets Ford Taurus. And starting 43rd in shotgun on the field, former USAC Silver Crown champion, the Pfizer Viagra Pontiac for Milwaukee, Oregon driver, Mike Blitz. Among those drivers that did not qualify here, Wally Dahlenbach, Blaze Alexander, and Hutt Strickland. Just three drivers and three cars missing the starting field here for this Winston 500 presented by UPS. Our race analysis shows you this one's 188 laps, 500 miles. The largest purse in the history of the Winston 500, $2.795 million. The pit window, well, that's got to be a little bit of a question mark, Benny, as to how far they can go. Not a lot of time in happy hour to determine that. There's the race record. Ernie Irvin set it just a few years back. Back with the green flag from Talladega Super Speedway in just a moment. We welcome you back to Talladega Super Speedway on a beautiful afternoon. Getting set for the start. Let's check in quickly with a situation updating the Earnhardt crew chief problem. Uh, Bill Weber. Well, Kevin Hamlin is the crew chief for Dale Earnhardt. Last night, he was a driver in an exhibition monster truck race here at Talladega. You can see he is seated in the pit area today. That is because last night, he fractured, has a compression fracture of the vertebrae in his back. So he's in a great deal of pain, but is in the pit area today. We'll work with Earnhardt on the radio. When Earnhardt rolled down pit road, he asked him how that truck driver is doing. And Kevin goes, that's ex-truck driver. All Earnhardt wanted to know is if he won. He said, I did. I hope there are seat belts on Kevin Hamlin's seat because he didn't need it to watch this one today. Folks, glad to have you with us. Almost 170,000 strong in the stands to watch the 32nd running of the Winston 500. Front row Joe and Awesome Bill lead him down. 43 of the world's best stock car drivers ready to get it on here at Talladega. Checker, a pole setter already in the middle, already back to about 12, 14, 15, and losing positions every yard, it seems. He knew that he was going to be a sitting duck, and certainly he was. When Dale Earnhardt Jr. made that move down to the inside, everybody went by on each side. He told our pit reporters during NASCAR today that he would have no shot leading that first lap, and indeed he was right. And here comes that big Budweiser Chevrolet for Dale Earnhardt Jr. A couple of young drivers looking at NASCAR's future, Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart head to the trial and they will lead the first lap, first and second, but they are side by side from there on back. Now trying to move up on the outside of Tony Stewart. Of course, he has a fast car. He qualified on the outside pole. If he can get a little help back there, he wants to move to the front. He 
And here comes Tony Stewart, the bottom for the lead. They're three wide. Going in turn three, Kenny Wallace helping Tony Stewart. And they will hang Dale Earnhardt Jr. out the dry. He's in the middle, and he will go backsliding. Has no drafting partners. And Stewart will try to lead lap number two. Well, two laps, two different leaders. Now we see the 31 of Mike Skinner and the 9 car of Stacy Compton in the middle. And Dave Marcus goes up and takes the lead. Dave Marcus led a lap in Talladega. Wow, look at him go. 59-year-old Dave Marcus in the real tree Chevrolet. His best qualifying effort of the year. He started ninth. And has he come to the front in a hurry? But now even he gets shuffled back. Here comes Tony Stewart with a whole line behind him, including Dale Jarrett, John Andretti, and Michael Walsh. Four wide back in the pack there. There you see it on your screen. Still four wide of portions of the racetrack. First lap, Marcus led lap two. Looks like Tony Stewart will lead lap number three. Folks, he got 188 laps. At this rate, we're going to have a record. And here goes John Andretti after the lead. Andretti made a new move down on the inside of Dale Jarrett coming off the of turn four. Shot him all the way up there. Now he's wanting the lead. And meanwhile, behind Dale Earnhardt is back in second spot. I'm trying to see who that car is in front. Where did Michael Walter come from? That's a new country hood from. Well, three leaders, three different laps. Let's see if Michael Walter. Here's Michael Walter trying to hold on the inside. Earnhardt, that big orange three on, the, on his roof indicated he's one of the Nobel Five drivers. Three wide. Ricky Rudd almost out on the apron as he is on the bottom with Earnhardt Jr. and Elliott on the outside. And is Michael going to lead that lap? No. Tony Stewart. Tommy Hamilton, the Ford car, started back in 19th, has moved his way up into second. And here comes Andretti up on the outside. They've got Michael Waltrip in the middle. And Junior's hooked up with the 43 of John Andretti. Well, in the past races here, at least the last two or three, that inside groove, I mean, the middle groove was not too bad, but today it doesn't look to be too good. Once you get in there, they just move the motor right on by you on either side. And right now, Andretti and Dale Earnhardt Jr. not making a lot of progress on the outside. That inside groove now with Tony Stewart, Pontiac, Chevrolet, and a pair of Pontiacs. back in fifth position. Big Texaco star for Rudd. Dale Jarrett is backslid. Now he's leading that middle pack in the middle. Group. There's DJ in the car number 88. Leading the draft with Kenny Wallace and Sterling Mullen. along with our points leader Bobby Levani, the Circuit City onboard camera. Bobby started in sixth spot, has slid back to 15th position. And there's Jeff Gordon on the inside who started dead last. Last time by Gordon was running uh, about 15th. He said he had a good race car and he certainly proved him that he does have. Just doing this, you ride along with Bobby Lamont. He looked up at Jeff Gordon. He launched his primary car at the beginning of the happy hour when a broken left front shock ripped the fender away and part of the tire. He saved the car, but they had to go to a backup car. This is the car he started 36 with and won here in April at Talladega. Bobby Lamont backed off the throttle. Did you see that, Ned? The cars are closing in enough. They had to back off the accelerator. I talked to Larry McReynolds yesterday after happy hour. He said, I've never even been concerned or seen any uh, brake dust after happy hour. But he said, we, I saw a lot of it on cars here after happy hour, but they were running up so fast on the other cars that they had to put their brakes on. Now they are three wide all around this racetrack, Benny. That is Cooper Cut caught in the middle. He has driving help from Kevin LePage. Behind him, there's Ricky Craven. 
that's what they're talking about by being so dependent. When you talk to these drivers, they all realize they're just so dependent on other drivers not to make a mistake, not slip up into them and make contact because once a car starts standing here, you can see that you can involve 20 cars without any problem at all. Now there are seven cars in a lead pack single file, but in years past, these seven cars would pull away very, very quickly from these guys running side by side. But that has not happened now. This second pack trying to hang on. Michael Walters was going for the lead about five laps ago, Ned, and now he is back leading that second pack. Yeah, but he'll catch up in a hurry here when we see those cars getting side by side up in front of him. They're trying to get around Earnhardt. They'll open up a big hole there, there. And that's going to allow Michael Walters and that other group to catch up. See how quickly they did? Just a half a lap. And see, Earnhardt tried to pass Ricky Rudd, and those two cars got side by side. Look how quickly the other car got, but look how quickly those front cars drove away from him. Let's check in the Earnhardt pits with Bill Weber. The new dirty word around here is dirty air. A lot of turbulent air created by the new aerodynamic packages on these cars. It is so turbulent out there in the draft that the plastic sheet that was on Earnhardt's windshield that they used to tear off during the race so he gets a clean windshield was ripped off by the turbulent air. He radioed in and said, you don't need to take it off. It's already gone. Wow. Now how about a father and son hookup? Earnhardt Jr. pushing his dad. Down the straightaway, can he push him to the lead? Right now they're back at about ninth or 10th position. It's like hanging on that rope when you get to the corner, you want to let go, and he had to let go. When he got his dad down the corner, he can't push the car straight in the corner he's got now. As he gets on the straightaway, here's a good spot, he moves up, and I'm sure he's literally touching the rear bumper of his dad's car. You just saw him bump him a moment ago, that, by the way, that orange rear spoiler indicates Earnhardt Sr. One of those for the No Bowl 5 million. Elliott Sadler down on the inside in that Sitco Ford. Out of the Wood Brothers table. That outside line is just not going, Ned, like we've seen it in the past. No, it is. It's a little bit surprising, Ben. Of course, we know that the inside line is the shortest way around the racetrack. But uh, right now, that inside line does appear to be a little bit faster. Yep, there is. You mentioned it. It's all the way up from the rear of the field and up there running now in the 10th position. Content to hang on to Dale Jarrett down on that inside line. And I think that they'll get a chance to make some passes here. Bill Elliott makes a move. As you watch Bill Elliott make his move, how many times this year have we said, as awesome Bill makes a move back in line, that sensational sophomore Tony Stewart is leading today in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. The Home Depot colors of Joe Gibbs Racing Team showing the way after 10 of 188 laps are complete. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Talladega for more Hold Your Breath Racing as they are three wide and now that middle groove beginning to work a little bit as well as the outside. Yeah, Jeff Gordon moved up on the outside and uh, really made that outside groove come into play. As a matter of fact, he's moved all the way to the front. Unbelievable, Benny. Jeff Gordon starts 43rd and has passed 42 cars and here on lap number 13, it looks like he will lead this race. Now he actually qualified eight, had to drop to the back of the field for the green flag. And now, look at this. What an effort. On board the low Chevrolet of Mike Skinner, caught in the middle. He's been there for about 10 laps now. He works his way forward and then. Something will happen, he goes backwards. Jerry Nadeau was in second spot just a moment ago, and Earnhardt goes for the lead. Nine-time winner at Talladega. He won both events in 1999. He won this race from 27th starting spot. And the Intimidator, look at these fans on their feet waving those hats. That's what it's all about. They want to see him on their feet screaming and waving as Earnhardt leads Ward Burton. But here comes Gordon with some drafting help on the outside. Will Earnhardt lead this lap? Yes, he will. Skinner is still in the middle, but he's about sixth or seventh position right now and has a car behind him. 
Well, we saw the 88 car up toward the front about five or six laps ago. Now he has dropped back significantly. Ray Dunlap, what's the problem? Well, Jerry, after they started 12, DJ said the car was pretty good, but all of a sudden the water temperature started going up. A lot of these guys have these cars taped off a lot in the front to try to get aerodynamics. So with that temperature going up into the 230 range, they decided they needed to get out and get some more air. So DJ dropped back a little bit so that he could be out of traffic. I think the exact same thing is what's going on with Bobby Labonte. So a couple of these guys with cars that are getting very, very warm. Now, Earnhardt is leading, and you got to remember, Bobby Labonte is our points leader with five events remaining, four after today. Dale Jarrett also in the contention. He's back and forth in the points, so that could be huge. This is one of those big hurdles that they had to get over that we talked about all week long. Now, meanwhile, back up front, Dale Earnhardt Sr. showing the way. Let's check in his pits again with Bill. Jerry, just to follow up, Ray just said that's why the three car got in the outside lane a few laps ago. Earnhardt's temps were going up. He called in. I got to get out and get some air. If he's in front, he gets plenty of air. John? Well, Ray Dunlap was absolutely right about Bobby Labonte running just a little bit warm. 205 on the water, 230 on the oil. Drop back, try to get some more air into that front opening, which is very, very small, trying to keep the car cool, keep the engine cool. See how far he's uh, staying back behind the 88 car, and the 88 car is staying pretty far back behind the car in front of him, so they can get as much clean, fresh air as possible. You say, well, why did they put the tape on the grill? The car is going to run warm, because the more tape you can run on the grill, the faster the car will run, because any air that goes in, hits the radiator, hits the engine, will slow the car down. But you have to get it right. You have to keep the water temperature around 200 degrees, with with as much tape as you possibly can. Back up front, there's the line, there's the conga line. They try to break each other's draft, but now with a huge hole, these cars punching the wind with NASCAR's rule changes. What NASCAR effectively did this year week was try to add about 100 horsepower equivalent of drag to these cars, opening up the restrictor plate initially to one inch, now dropping it back to 15, 16, so they have slowed them down some here at Talladega, but they have given the drivers throttle response. Yes, they have, and they like that, and as a result, we've seen the passing that we have. Jerry, I looked up on the scoreboard uh, after about the third lap, and the 43rd place car was a little over four seconds behind the leader. Right now, the last lap around, Chad Little, who is running 43rd, is 4.7 seconds behind the leader, so it hasn't changed a lot. How about that? NASCAR wanted to keep them together. The drivers wanted better racing. The fans wanted a better show. I believe we've accomplished that so far as we are 18 laps in it, and we've had five different leaders. As that outside line, though, here comes Mike Skinner with a little help from his friends, Jeff Gordon and company, Jerry Nadeau, and see if Skinner can lead. Well, he had a run coming down through the trial. And Skinner is in the lead now. Can he lead when he get back to the start-finish line? In fact, it's showing that he was the leader when he came across the start-finish line. Mike Skinner, his best finish of this year, came here in April. He actually finished right behind the guy who's chasing him right now, Jeff Gordon. We got a lot of Chevrolets up front here right now, and uh, a lot of them thought with the one-inch restrictor plate that maybe the Chevrolets had a little bit of an advantage. And after the 15, 16th, some of the Chevrolet drivers and teams were saying, "Hey, that hurt us more than it did the Ford." But right now, Benny, there are eight to Chevrolets out front of the first Ford of Bill Elliott. Yeah, well, what Ned? What all the players going down in the morning? What you're going down in the morning? The Chevrolets have a two-inch smaller, more narrow rear spoiler than the Fords and Pontiacs. And everyone was just screaming about what a Chevrolet runaway was going to be here at Talladega. And Kevin LePage apparently having a problem in the FamilyClick.com Ford Taurus. He's waving to the driver behind him as he slows on that back straight. We'll be headed to pit road to pipe Pat Trison and his crew to see if they can determine what the problem may be. Last time by. Kevin LePage was running in the 11th position. And we understand that maybe it's an engine. You wonder if he had that overheating problem and, and stayed out there and uh, kept uh, kept running. But now he's headed to the pit. All right, Mike Skinner becomes our sixth different leader here at Talladega. And the low Chevrolet driver trying to get his first victory 
in his 140th start. Back with more from Talladega in just a moment. Talladega Super Speedway. We left you a moment ago. Mike Skinner was the leader. That didn't last for long, but two laps. And then the 24 car, Jeff Gordon, came around Skinner. And then the inside pack, led by Dale Earnhardt, has now come back by and Earnhardt leads. We have had eight lead changes so far among six different drivers. And we are just 24 laps in to the Winston 500. Still running four abreast of times. There you see two packs of three abreast. That might, might be Dave Marcus back in the middle of that pack. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Earnhardt still leading the group on the inside. Jeff Gordon leading the group on the outside. As you watch these two packs still riding side by side, single file. Let's check in in the Kevin LePage pits with Ray. Well, Jerry, it wasn't a tape off problem on the front of the number 16. They didn't have much tape on the front at all. Kevin radioed in and said, I lost oil pressure, so he shut it off. They're behind the wall right now taking a look at it. They don't know if it's terminal or not, but it was oil pressure, not water temperature. So Kevin LePage, uh, the first to retire here, the 43 starters. If that gauge read zero on the oil pressure, he's got a problem, and I'm sure, pretty sure it's terminal. Take a look, Bill Elliott now, the first four we see towards the front of the field. He's in an inside line in fourth position. He was, uh, Bill was, when I mentioned that a moment ago about the GM card, I should have said the GM card got kind of cut away because there are some Pontiacs in that uh, mix up front there. But Bill Elliott was ninth at that time. Now he's moved up to sixth. And there's the last place car, that 97 of Chad Little. And uh, he's still only 4.6 seconds behind the leader. You see the 99, the 17, and the 97. Three of the Jack Roush cars back running in the 40th, 42nd. 41st and 42nd position. Dale Earnhardt continuing to lead here at Talladega. Different Chevrolet behind him, the Caterpillar Pontiac. On the inside of the DuPont Chevy of Jeff Gordon, who's riding along now in the nose roof camera with Mike Skinner. Starting to say a moment ago, Bill Elliott. Hard to believe Bill Elliott has not won in 188 races. His last win came in September of 1994 at Darlington, but that could change today. And now back to our points leader. Bobby Labonte is now running in the third position. He and Dale Jarrett uh, were back two or four spots back when in there. They were 35th and 36th uh, about three laps ago. Now they're beginning to move up a little bit. Still getting some space between themselves and the car in front of them, Prime. Now looks like that Gordon and, and Skinner got a good run. Not enough to get on the outside and challenge Earnhardt. Well, Earnhardt's found in a situation there that's really working for him right now. Look to the outside there. Ricky Craven in the Midwest Transit car number 50 right in front of Kenny Schrader. They have been basically glued together on that high line. Whoa, Bill Elliott all the way down below the yellow line had to back out of it. He was very fortunate there that others behind him were observant and didn't try to crowd him, gave him room to, to back out of the line. Tony Stewart had to make an evasive move to go, go by Bill Elliott as now Jeff Gordon goes to the front. Two cars are within four and a half seconds of each other. And we see the 40 cars throwing Marlin this position on the outside of the 25. Kind of pushes Nadu down to the middle. He closes up on the back bump of Skinner. He's going to try it on the outside of Skinner, but could not quite make it. Prefer to make that move on the outside because the wall is a lot closer to the outside line than it is the inside line. In case you have a problem, go and smack the wall. You don't have far to go. It doesn't hurt quite as much. And look how much that Jeff Gordon, how much space he lost since the last time by to that inside line. Mike Skinner down the behind the run. He's already caught that middle net. He realized that inside line has been the place to be. Yes, uh, the, the middle group has not been the place to be so far in this race, and that's a little bit surprising that he found out very 
quickly that he was going towards the back, and so as soon as he got an opportunity to fall in there behind Ricky Rudd, he took that opportunity. Well, we have 29 laps in the books at Talladega with Earnhardt, Burton, Stewart, Elliott, Rudd, the top five, and many of these fans have yet to sit down. And we'll be right back. Talladega Super Speedway, the Western 500 presented by UPS, still in the early laps, and there they are from high above. Panoramic shot of Talladega Super Speedway, courtesy of the fine folks at Pennzoil, and our Pennzoil copter cam. You can see him three wide and now four wide. And Bobby Labonte is right in the middle of all of that mix. In fact, he drove right up there into the middle coming off of turn two. He had a tremendous run. There was no place to go to lose out of it. So he said, I'm just going to win. Because he's gotten caught in there for a mess. Meanwhile, back to the lead, Tony Stewart, who led earlier, has now fought his way back. Bill Valley, in the four, trying to help Tony Stewart. But Stewart goes down and says, let me put one of these GM cars. And Ricky Rudd has fought his way. He got back to about 20 for something about five laps ago. Here he is now up there passing Bill Elliott for four. And then, speaking of dropping back, the 24 car of Jeff Gordon is now backslid to 20th position. As, as he is going backwards, the 18 and the 88 of Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett are coming forward. So we're seeing a little reversal for what we saw in the first 15 or 20 laps of this race. Well, I tell you, I, I respect all and admire all of these drivers for the patience that they have shown so far and the respect that they've given their fellow drivers out there. Not making this basic move. Here's DJ trying to move around the Jr. Jr. in the middle of the right behind Nadu, and on the inside of one clear body to body. Now, Chassis doesn't come into play as much on this racetrack as it does at Daytona. I'm certainly not as much as it does a lot of other racetracks, but then we run far enough now that maybe if you're off a little bit, it might begin to show. Yes, it is. If, if you're not perfect right now, you are starting to feel the drivers are not having to squeeze out the throttle. But so far, I haven't seen him much squeezing out the throttle. Looks like these guys still running wide open around the speedway. Jerry Nadeau and Bernard Jr. and Kenny Wallace, all three have very, very strong race cars. Well, they made that middle group work there, and maybe that's the difference is having strong race cars in there as opposed to seeing the team in the past. It hasn't worked too good for them. Maybe they didn't have the right drafting partner or whatever the case might be, but certainly they're making it work. And there's Jeremy Mayfield right in the middle. The three wide behind the red, white, blue car. That is the 12 of Jeremy Mayfield. Looking back at Sterling Marlin. You see Dale Jarrett on his the right side of the screen. And look at this, 193 miles per hour. He goes, squeeze out the fly just a little bit. So everybody goes started back in 40th position. Roger Pinsky on mobile one four. See that inside move is moving, this line is moving there right now. Johnny Benson goes by some cars. Well, Jeff Gordon has dropped back to 20th spot on the outside line, work his way to the middle line and down to the inside line, and now work his way back toward the front of the inside line. Well, he's going to, when this race is over, Jeff Gordon's going to know exactly how his car handles in every position because he's going to be in most of them. He's already been in a lot of different positions, certainly been in a lot of traffic. Now, we showed you the Roush cars toward the back of the pack, including Jeff Burton, the guy second in points. What's going on with him, Bill Weber? Well, Jerry, that's Jeff Burton, a.k.a. Uh, Captain Provisional. I tried to get a straight answer out of uh, Frank Stoddard, his crew chief. I said, you're still way in the back. Because what are you talking about? We're three seconds behind the leader. But what he said is it's an L.A. traffic jam in front of us. We're waiting for the traffic cop to wave us through. But in reality, this is, appears to be part of a plan. Because Burton just called in, and he not only talked to Frank Stoddard, but he talked to Robbie Reiser, who's the crew chief for Matt Kenson, and said, have Matt close up a little bit. We don't want to lose these guys in front of us. Pick up positions when they pick. Right now, they think it's safer where they're at, but they are not frustrated. This is part of a plan for doing okay. Well, thanks, Bill. We'll keep an eye on those Rosketeers toward the back of the pack there with Bobby Reiser and Jeff Burton running toward the back. Meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt in the good Chevrolet. Seven time Winston Cup champion and Mr. Restrictor Plate, Dale Earnhardt Sr., leading the way at Talladega. Ten wins in a Restrictor Plate competition, and Earnhardt showing them how to get it done after 36 laps. Back in just a moment.
Well, the Vikings are a powerhouse in the NFL. And how about Mr. Earnhardt, Mr. Restrictor Plate? What a powerhouse he is at Daytona and Talladega. Ten wins at these two racetracks, 31 top fives. He just goes on two, over 2,000 laps led, and he keeps adding to that. Make it 2,085 right now. We can't do that, but he just keeps adding to that total. Ooh, Bobby Hamilton up on the outside was four wide as he goes down the corner, and he's just up on the outside. He comes off the corner. There's still looks like about four wide. Pulse to Joe Nemechek trying to fight his way back to the front. There he is right in the middle of the 33 car. And right now, the last time they were shown, they were shown in 19th, but I think he's probably about 15th now. Wallace and the Miller Light Ford Taurus. Left to heavy traffic, sorry. Left started in 38th position and he's now up in 20 seconds. So he's gained 16 spots, but Bill Elliott. Bill's got a run here on the outside. The old side by side with the banking Earnhardt trying to hold off. Awesome Bill. And Bill looks like he's getting a little bit of a draft and push, maybe from Arnold Jr. As you watch this side by side action, let's check in with Ray Dunlap. Well, Jerry, part of the reason we're seeing a lot of passing here is there's a lot of cars with different rear end gear ratios because they weren't sure what this plate was going to do. We've got a variable all the way from about a 294 up to a 315 rear gear. Now, what that does is it's going to change how fast you can come down pit road. Depending on what gear you're in, which most guys come down pit road in second gear, your variable will be about 3,500 to 3,700. But Robert Yates just got on the radio and told Dale Jarrett, why don't you try using first gear coming down pit road? It'll help get you here a lot quicker. He's got to keep his track at 3,300 RPMs. So the rear end gear is certainly a big issue here in a lot of cars trying different strategies. That's certainly something to consider as the day goes on. Particularly talking about fuel miles. And guys are maybe moving in on some pit stops. If you watch Bill Elliott, who became our seventh different leader today, giving us an 11 different lead change. What about pit stops again? Well, they're coming around to complete their 43rd lap. And in the past several years, they could run about 50 to 55 laps on a tank of fuel. I don't believe that they can run that long now with the bigger restrictions, they and also with those. Those things up on the roof and the, the taller spoilers, that's going to pull a little bit more fuel through the car. So I'm thinking that they're going to maybe 50 at the outside. And many back in the spring, they ran Dale Jarrett out of gas. He was a contender and ran out of fuel, ended up losing a lap, and that cost him a very, very good So you have to be sure that you don't run out of fuel because if you do it at the start finish line, the time you coast around, you're going to lose a tremendous amount of distance. We talked about Jeff Burton back in third position. He's four seconds behind the leader, just four seconds behind the leader, and he's in touch with the pack. So if, you lose, if you lose four seconds, if you lose one second during a pit stop, that's about 300 yards on the racetrack. You may never get caught back up. That outside lane, the M&M's Pontiac, and Kenny Slater, who got his very first win at this racetrack back in July of 1988. Slater having a good run. In the car number 36, and behind him is Kenny Wallace, still looking for his first Winston Cup win. Very strong car out of the Andy Petrie stage. Out of the Dale Earnhardt Jr. The bad car. Listing the crew chiefs, they're talking to drivers. We're talking about pit strategy. We'll come back in just a moment and cover the first round of pit stops at Talladega in a moment. Back in Talladega, Alabama, Talladega Super Speedway, 45 year old Bill Elliott leading the way. And pit stops are beginning. Here comes Rusty Wallace down pit road toward Robin Pemberton and company. Well, Rusty Wallace makes the long trip down pit road. The engine is running, so they're not out of fuel, but you would have to believe that perhaps the light flash and Rusty on pit road basically all by himself. The 50 came with him. It's a four tire stop, clean the windshield, around to the left side. Fuel still going in. The field still on the back stretch, watching for Craven to come down pit road. His car's still on pit road. 
Rusty will go off by himself. He will be all by himself. Very lonely on this 2.66 mile track. The other drivers are coming into the pits this time around as Ricky Craven goes out. Others are coming in. Rusty got out in front of the lead pack, but they'll catch him on the back stretch. Takes a long time to get these cars up to speed. Here's Jeff Gordon down pit road. There's uh, the car number four, Bobby Hamilton there. Kenny Wallace is there. There's the tied car of Scott Pruitt. Johnny Benson is on pit road. Ted Musgrave in the Bell South car, the 01. Let's go down to Gordon's pit and watch this action here. Those guys got to try to get four tires on. Bill Levin. It is a four-tire stop. Gordon had to tiptoe into his pit stall. The car is just a little bit loose. Make a panorama adjustment. Send him around to the left side. Put on two more tires on the left side. Then send Gordon back out. Car was just a little bit hot. Did not remove any tape that I saw. He is now back to the race. And a lot more drivers coming up today. A lot of the front runners are heading down pit road this time. About half of the team. As they come down from lap 49, Bill Elliott will lead him down as most of the leaders now are on pit road. Kevin Graham and Dan Thorne ready to serve us. Awesome Bill Elliott. Let's go down to Ray Dunlap. 88 and 28 are in here, Jerry. As the 88 said, we don't need any chassis adjustment at all, but guys, make sure that grill gets clean and pull one inch of tape off. Now to John Kernan. Point leader Bobby Labonte is in a four tire change. They are not making any chassis adjustments to Bill Weber. It's four tires for Earnhardt. Left's going on. You see triple pitch. Earnhardt's on his way. Dale Jr. behind him. The 43 was all here. And the race at pit road is underway. And Bill Elliott was the first one of his first to exit pit road, although he did not have the quickest stop because of where he was pitting at the far end. He was able to beat. And now Earnhardt is being shown in front of him as they come up on the race, racing surface. Remember, these were green flag pit stops. And they were told in the driver's meeting, Jerry, to keep those left wheels down on that yellow line until you get over to turn two. Let's go to John Curry. Matt Kenseth, one of the Rouseketeers, who is hanging back toward the back of the pack, is in for his pit stop and four tire change. They also may have a chassis adjustment on the left rear to Bill Weber. And as we talked about this part of the plan, they wanted to make sure pit road was clear. They were able to stay out another lap. Apparently a fuel mileage attempt here by the Roush guys. It's four tires for Burton working on the left side. They clean the grill. He's got fuel, and now he will be held. Jeff Burton is being held by the official. This would have to be, I would imagine, too fast down pit road. Be held for 15 seconds. This will be very costly. Burton is on his way. We'll check. All four Roush cars, or four Roush cars, I should say, pitting on that lap, the 17, the 99, the 97, the 21, and only the Sadler has a Roush engine. Well, that will be devastating, too, Jeff Burton. Here comes Mark Martin into the pits. He stayed out and led a lap. Bill? Now Mark Martin on pit road, and he's a very lonely figure. A track bar adjustment on the rear. Now they come around on the left side. Again, four tires for all these cars. Fuel going in. Mark, no complaints about the car. Working on the left-hand side. Fuel going in. Now having some trouble with the left front. They could not seat the left front tire on. Finally got it on the studs. Tight the lug nuts. Mark's on his way. Also, Michael Walter exiting pit road, and Stacy Compton. Those three cars are the keeping a pit chart at home. And we have been, and I carry to say this, we have been caution free thus far for the first 51 laps as they flash by that time. Green flag pit stops have been in order of the day. The first round of pit stops between laps 47 and 51. That's pretty good strategy on those of those guys to stop. And the seven car all of a sudden was leading the race as you run out of fuel, Ned. Well, I wonder, well, did he just come out of the pits? He just came out of the pits, pits a moment ago. He was in the uh, armpit road with the six car and the nine car. And it looks like he's trying to get up to speed. I think that's what the situation is. It does take a long time to get these cars up to speed. He had taken the lead as a result of uh, staying out on the track while over the pit. He should be up to speed by now. So. Something, is, oh, something is amiss with Michael Walker's car. He is not back and running nearly like he was before. And we are being told they have two members in the uh, Sitco Super Guard team for Jeff Burke over the wall too soon. That was the reason for the 15 second hold by NASCAR moment ago. On pit road. He is now 18 and a half seconds behind the leader who is Bill Elliott. 
He does have a drafting partner now in the way of, of the 50 car of Ricky Craven. There you see the cars that pitted just a moment ago. Michael Waltrip. And Mark Marcus, who wants Boo Whitaker, the rear tire changer on Joe Nemechek's car. Talladega Super Speedway in Talladega, Alabama. I'm Jerry Punch along with Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, Ray Dunlap, and Bill Weber bringing you exciting live action of the 32nd running of the Winston 500 presented by UPS. There are 37 cars on the in the lead draft. The 37th place car of Stacy Compton is three seconds behind the leader, Bill Elliott. But Jeff Burton, here he is with Rick Mask in the green number 14, Burton in the middle, and Ricky Craven in the red number 50. They are more than 20 seconds behind the leader and losing ground every lap. In fact, they've only 21 seconds this last time back. Take a look at our cold pit summary. If you just joined us, we've had green flag pit stops between laps 47 and 51. Elliott, great pit work in first, out first. Earnhardt lost seven spots. Earnhardt Jr., that is. Earnhardt Sr. lost 10 spots. Kenseth gained quite a bit, and Ricky Rudd basically a loss. He lost one spot coming out. Bill Earnhardt, the three car, is up on the outside, but he's trying to get down to the inside, trying to. He said, Come on, dear son, let me in, let me in the bottom lane. Will you let me in? We saw Rusty Wallace come down pit road basically by himself, although the 50 was there. They had to come down on that lap, which was 49, because they weren't sure, 100% sure they could get to lap 50. They didn't want to run out. They had to come early that time to find out. John? Keep an eye on Ward Burton. He's running. He was running in the fourth spot last time. He came by uh, the pit road area, but his water temperature is reading at 200. 80 degrees, so his crew chief Tommy Baldwin said every now and then kind of get out of the draft a little bit to get some air into the radiator to cool things off. And Tommy also said, Bud, don't worry about it because everybody's running a little bit hot here. And also Michael Waltrip, when he left pit road, a little bit of problem getting up to speed as we could see and we documented. Talked to his crew chief Bobby Kennedy. He said, I don't know if there's a problem. Uh, Michael didn't tell me there was a problem, but he did come up to speed. Kind of slowly, but everything looks like it's okay now. To read that line. Well, John, Johnny Benson came in, had a real good pit stop from Jay Minson's crew. This car he's driving today, the first time out in the year 2000, when Johnny went to get off of pit road, he said, I just lost second gear. That doesn't matter when they're racing right now, but next time he comes down for a pit stop, could be a big problem for Benson, who now does not have second gear. I'm surprised that Michael Walter, now his car is up to speed. It looks like that, that he had lost his service, something had happened, but... Now back up speed and Earnhardt is trying everything he knows to get back up to the front. He's working his way. He's right beside Joe Nemechek. He was tempted to the last two in the or sixth position. And Bill Elliott is showing the way. Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Georgia. This is the car Bill Elliott debuted at Daytona in July of the Pepsi 400. And this one gets Mac Mama. He led twice for 42 laps at Daytona in July. Got Tampa behind him. Spawn hit the wall for his 38. They rebuilt this car and felt like this would be one of the cars to beat today. And indeed, he's showing here early on. Look at that 14 lead changes among nine different drivers. As Earnhardt in the three and the 33 of Minichek gets side by side, it allows those cars in front of them that's lined up in a line to pull away from by just a little bit. But that's not a big problem as soon as Earnhardt and Nemechek settles this dispute for a they'll get back and push back that quickly. I think that's what that uh, front four there are hoping that they'll continue to race side by side back there. They're simply going to away. But you're right. I think even if they lose uh, half a straightaway, I think they'll still be able to catch back up. Nemechek's done a pretty good job of working his way back after being shuffled early on. Good pit work in the pits by the crew down there, the Oakwood Homes crew. And now he's trying to battle his way back side by side with Earnhardt. A little bit of a push from behind. And Ricky Rudd. 
Scott Perez also doing a good job. He's pretty too tall. He started back quite a ways. Started back 35th, but now he's been going 12th the last time by. Different colors on that tide car this week. That's got uh, the crimson tide colors. We're in Alabama, so they got roll tide. Those of you are football fans, you saw Alabama roll on ESPN in our coverage on Saturday night primetime, and they had a huge win over Ole Miss. And now that's what Scott Burton wants to do is gain some momentum with those colors in his car in front of this partisan Alabama crowd. Took a look up on the outside of Bale Jarrett, but he just couldn't muster enough speed to pull up there. He's got Dave Marcus behind trying to help him get to the front. And I talked about the everyone was concerned about the Chevrolets driving away, but right now he has Ford in first and third and a Pontiac in second. And they're not the first Chevrolet battling for third and another Pontiac. So right now, the makes is pretty well are pretty well done. Still cannot. I am so excited for Dave Marcus and all those wonderful Dave Marcus fans who've got to be enjoying his run here today. Marcus hanging on back in seventh position. So look down from high above Talladega at that 4,000 foot back straightaway. Let's check in down in the Jeff Burton pits with Bill Webber. Well, as you guys in the booth pointed out, the 99 car was penalized for one man going over the wall too soon. Watch this video. There are two Heavy Sitco build. cars on the track. One is Elliott Sadler, one is Jeff Burton. What happens here as they come down pit road, you see even our camera guy almost followed the wrong Sitco car. The jack man looked at the 21 instead of the 99 and started to go over the wall, only put one foot over, but then that's what resulted in the penalty. The two cars looking very similar coming down pit road. Wow, I had thought about that, but, and you know what? They're both blue and white in this particular race. Elliott Sadler has a, a different paint job, and they look almost identical. And they're pitting three pits up, apart, so that was an honest mistake. Wasn't meant to gain an advantage at all for Jeff Burton, but what it did was hurt him quite a bit on the racetrack. Yeah, he is now 24 seconds behind the leader and then losing ground every lap. It's, he's in a three-car draft and uh, simply not running fast as this uh, front group is running. Elliott and Jenny and Dale Jarrett. Ford, Pontiac, and Ford. The first Chevrolet is now five comets. Back that is Earnhardt alongside the Pontiac. Big Caterpillar colors for Ward Burton. Well, he's a two-time winner here at Talladega. Remember that dominating performance back in 1985 when Awesome Bill made up two laps to win the Winston 500. He leads it after 64 laps. We'll be right back. And on the very first lap, as Joe let him down, he told us before the race, I'm going to be a sitting duck. And boy, was he card after what? Take a look as he went by on both sides. Went down in turn one, Earnhardt Jr. started third, dove to the inside. They got Nemechek in the middle, and he has been just dusted on both sides. But now he's, I think he went back as far as 15th or 20th, but now he's back up to the sixth position, racing alongside Dale Earnhardt. And they've been running side by side for, seems like forever, probably the last five laps. And the top four cars even lined up, not able to drive away from them. No need to check Long Winston Cup victory came in September a year ago. Up at Loudon, Looking for his second career victory, but first ever at Talladega. As he's holding on to the inside groove there, right in front of Ricky Rudd. Earnhardt and Dave Marcus on the high side there. Those cars are third, or pardon me, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And it is interesting, Jerry, you mentioned a moment ago that they're they've been running side by side there for a long time, but still keeping pace with that uh, four cars that are running single file out in front of them. Right now we have 37 cars in this lead draft. Here's the ball first, you the five folks at Pinsor. Penzoil Copter Camp showing you them spreading out three wide and intermittently four wide here at Talladega Super Speedway. Oh, but the car in the middle, maybe Jeremy Mayfield is off the pace. 
Something has happened to the mobile one Ford. I believe it's Jeremy. They had their troubles in practice. They only got a couple laps of practice prior to Bud Cole qualifying. They had an engine problem, and now he just waves people by. Jeremy Mayfield had six consecutive DNFs until that second place finish last Sunday at Lowe's Motor Speedway. So six of the last seven events, they've had horrendous luck, and Looks like it may be biting him again as Jeremy gets slower and slower on the racetrack. Well, he pushed the car up in neutral and turned the engine off, which is a very, very bad sign. It's like almost obvious that he has an engine problem with the car. John Kernan. Jeremy Mayfield is headed to the garage area. He radioed his crew chief, Peter Suspenzo, and said, there's something wrong. Could be the engine, could be the rear end. They asked him to check the ignition box. He said, to switch to the secondary ignition. He said, I've already done that. That's not the problem. So he is headed back to the garage area. They're going to put up on jack stands and see exactly what the problem is. Now, top right for Jeremy Mayfield. You want to see? He had come from 40th starting spot all the way to the top 10 and now heads to the garage area. the field we told you they were only a, just a few seconds apart we're going to hold this shot and watch the leader come by and go from first to 36th position just that fast that's how <laughs> folks you, you take a couple of hiccups and a deep breath and 36 has already gone by that was 3.1 seconds Many of the drivers predicted this week with the rule change that if you started this race at Talladega, you had a chance to lead it. And thus far, it looks like they're holding true. Well, that's true. I, a lot of guys have been up here, and a lot of guys have led the race. And it looks like that the old master Earnhardt just will not give up. He just refuses to go backwards. He goes down and tries to slow the 22 car down to try to get some push in the 71 car. Meanwhile, here comes a group of cars on the outside. They're going to get a run on Earnhardt. Earnhardt, the leader of the Interstate Batteries, Pontiac, riding back in the back of the pack in 29th position. Hasn't led a lap today, but remember, he had his most comfortable point margin of the season, 252 points coming in with just five events remaining, four after today. Jerry, I think he's riding. I think he's being very patient and he's riding. You know, the leaders aren't going away and anywhere, so he's just uh, staying in position. Well, the front three cars, Ford, Pontiac, and Ford, Elliott, and Gray, and Dale Perry. And the fans flash their colors, and the crew members watch and wait. After 72 laps, awesome Bill showing the way. Meanwhile, nothing has changed since we left you. Bill Elliott still leads. John Andrade is in second. Dale Jarrett is third. Ward Burton is still fourth. And Dale Earnhardt is now easy back because Dave Marcus has taken over that fifth spot. And Sterling Marlin appears to be off the pace. Bill, wonder what's going on. Benny, at first they thought it was an alternator problem. Now it's starting to miss. When he went by, the crew listened, says like it's down a complete cylinder. So Sterling Marlin on the track, but off the pace, we go to John. In the garage area with Jeremy Mayfield, whose crew is working on the car. Jeremy, what happened? I'm not sure. We're uh, trying to find out about something. Uh, this mobile one four has been doing, uh, done a good job. You know, we started in the back, worked our way up. Uh, just going as planned, you know, we're just trying to, uh, try to make laps here, get to the end. and. Uh, Made it seem like uh, we had a lot of bad luck, you know, but, uh, you know, I did a good job and just uh, that's all you can ask for. I heard you tell your crew on the radio that it was getting pretty hot in the uh, in the car. How hot was it? Yeah, my feet were burning pretty bad. It was like uh, the exhaust him way up or something, so uh, we'll have to look at it and see what happened, but uh, still, you know, we had a good run going. All right, Jeremy Mayfield's crew working on his car. Back upstairs. Wow. Six uh, or seven DNF in the last eight races. Tough break for Jeremy Mayfield at Mobile One Team. Mike Skinner trying to follow Kenny Schrader. Well, let me see the maybe jump, jumped out on the outside. And I guess they're about four wide about now. Yep, sure enough. Bill Elliott is the leader. Elliott has led 34 laps. 
There is Dave Marcus and Dale Earnhardt. A couple of veterans. They nearly run. Marcus with a Richard Childress engine dead and tried it. And I'm running awfully well. How about that bottom line? Yeah, Ricky Rudd has a run coming down there. Fox County right on his bumper. He's got a blow right past him. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. ran up behind Dave Marcus and had to back off and almost hit him. Almost Boy. did. As a matter of fact, Dave Marcus, when he came off turn two, his car got a little bit loose. He had to chase it up the hill. And just that chasing, that turning right and chase up the hill, allowed those cars to drive under him and pass him off turn two. Well, there's about 16 cars, three wide, after 78 laps at Talladega. And some of these poor folks in the grandstands have yet to sit down. All that three. The breast racing back there is allowed to that uh, single car draft up front to pull away just a little bit, but that'll tell you what's like right here today. Well, that front bunch decided they want to race a little bit right now. They're tired of riding in the line. Bobby Hamilton has worked his way back up front to go back to film Chevrolet. Down on the inside. Steve's had a great run here today. Didn't get to, to qualify the car. Kyle Petty qualified it, but because he's running the truck race out in Texas, but it, uh, car is having it near the front all day. And right now we're in the 22nd place. And for you Jeff Burton fans, the 99 car, the Sitco Super Guard machine, has a lap behind. They were held 15 seconds on pit road for a crew member coming over the wall too soon. And as Bill Weber showed us, with both the Sitco cars pitting a couple of pits apart, the crew member got confused and came over the wall with one foot, and that produced a penalty. And thus, Jeff Burton, a half a lap back. You talk about a lone man. Poor Tony Stewart is on the outside with no one. He finally, when he sees the four car go by, falls in behind him. And Elliot Sather was back there as well. Elliot coming down the backstretch seemed to be by himself, but evidently he was getting the grab from the 20 car of Tony Stewart, and he was closed up, must have passed 10 cars. Don't let that sit there, number 21, the blue and white car. We only picked up five spots. This time by Elliot Sather was 12. And the 40 car, I'm told, has been black flagged because they feel like he's not running up to the minimum speed they have. NASCAR has a rule that you have to be within a certain percentage of the pole speed. And uh, currently, Jeremy Marlin is not close to that, so they will bring him back to the garage area. Well, we saw Junior push his father around. Let's see if Dad can return the favor and push Junior around. Those cars dance around and move around. Those drivers will swear to you they never move. They stay right <laughs> between those white lines. But we know better, don't we, Ned? Yeah, we can see it. Now, Earnhardt Sr. is going to look up on the outside of his son. Puts him in the middle because here comes Kenny Wallace up on the outside of Earnhardt. Sterling Marlin on pit road, the Coors Chevrolet with the hood up. NASCAR has brought back the pit road with the black flag. And of course, NASCAR has spotters all around this racetrack to look at the racetrack. They would not take any chances if they saw anything at all. And the best car who stayed green is Bill Elliott leading here on lap number 82. It's Ken Schrader trying to make a move up on the outside, trying to go around Dale Jerry, take over third. Group, make it begin to work a little bit because a lot of them been up there trying it for a long time. And Bobby Hamilton, that four car was just pushing. Schrader trying to get him by those cars. Kenny Schrader's very first Winston Cup victory came here in July of 1998. July 31st, 1998. 1988. I'm sorry, 1988. I can't read my own run. 1988. Thank you for being fucked. Right like a doctor, I, <laughs> Can't what you said, I knew I knew the, I knew it wasn't 98 years because he hadn't won one since 91. Exactly. And he would like to change that very much here today. And the last victory coming in June of 91 it goes with 298 races ago. Talking about Kenny Schrader, 
He's making a serious challenge right now for second position. And on Friday morning, if you just joined us in practice, Gordon ran over a bunch of orange cones at the start finish line with that primary car. Then at happy hour, they broke a shock absorber. And Mark Bobby Hamilton goes to the high side. Here's a Kodak Chevrolet. He led that lap, but unfortunately has no one with him. And he would keep falling back. He went out there and hit that wall of air and just killed him. Well, there's Tony Stewart now trying to help that car number four Hamilton, but he's already been backslid to about seventh or eighth position. Can you imagine that? Bobby Hamilton led the last lap, and right now he's trying his best to stay 10th place as Steve Gresson, and that Hot Wheels car, drives up on the inside of him. And this part is an Alabama crowd pulling for Steve Grissom, an Alabama native. They turned down a chance to play collegiate football because he wanted to go drive a race car. And look at Gordon coming up on the outside. And you can hear the fans in the back of the by three, by three. 36 positions. And Schroeder still hasn't led a lap. Jeff Gordon led the last lap, but Schroeder's looking good right now. Talking about the yellow car in the middle, in the middle car. He's going to sit there in the middle and say, well, this got me up here. Let's see if I can stay in that position. Schroeder trying to hang on the bottom of the racetrack. But here comes Jeff Gordon on the outside with drafting help from Jerry Nadeau. He's trying to go down and pick up Nadeau. Here you see Jeff come off the corner move on to try to pick up the 25 car. And Hope Gordon right out front. Their pace has slowed down about a half a second and a half since they started racing. Bill Elliott was running anywhere from 51.30 to 51. In seconds, 51 and 60. And that last lap by Jeff Gordon was 52 seconds flat. Bobby Hamilton roaring back with a little shove from the Home Depot Pontiac of Tony Stewart. And now we're riding along with Mark Martin, who led 98 laps here in the spring. But today, he started way toward the back of the pack, back in 27th position, and is now all the way up to the seventh spot. There have been 16 lead changes among 10 different drivers, and Jeff Gordon showing the way. Well, that number 87. Today, the stakes are high on this high bank, high speed Talladega Oval. As these five drivers hope they are the ones to walk away with a million dollars. It's the fifth and final No Bull 5 bonus battle of the year. And take a look. Jeff Gordon, one of our No Bull 5 contenders, is leading here after 91 laps. Our Craftsman Race Recap shows you that Jeff Gordon is the leader. He has led eight of 91 laps. There have been 19 lead changes. And thus far, although I hate to mention it, we are caution free. A race record pace, 183.975 mile per hour average. The lap leader Ferrari has led the ball thus far. Earnhardt, Stewart, Gordon, and Mark. Mike Skinner, Bobby Hamilton, Earnhardt Jr., Dave Marcus, and Michael Walter. Off the track, will be worked on Sterling Marlin, the poor Chevrolet driver back on the racetrack. Mayfield gone to the garage area with an engine problem, as did Kevin LePage. And Jimmy Spencer just made a pit stop a moment ago, so he has gone a lap down. That's a little bit earlier than we thought that would be coming in, but apparently he felt he needed to stop, and so he did as Bobby Hamilton goes for the lead. Bobby Hamilton in the Kodak Chevrolet, the Morgan McClure stable, Rutt Pittman, the engine builder. They've had some success here. They've won here. It's pretty early as a driver. Now these cars are trying to pull away from the second time. And that second, Rusty Wallace is part of this five-car breakaway. But leading that second pack is Matt Kendrick and Mike Bliss. Kendrick, who for the first pit stop, ran back in four positions with a nice second in the line. But after that pit stop, he has marched his way right to the front. And the last time I was in sixth position. 
throw it over to Rusty here for just a moment. Rusty Wallace on the Miller Lite roof camera, onboard camera with our Jimmy Dean telemetry. Take a look at what speed we're talking about here for Rusty's Taurus. He watches it goes down the corner at 188. As soon as he goes in and hits this bank, he's going to lose a couple of, a couple of miles per hour, I should say. We saw him go down to 186. Oh, he had to touch the brakes a little bit. As it came off the corner, all of a sudden, the car just the cars in front of him slowed down. He, as we see the four cars losing the lead. Did something happen to the four car all of a sudden? Well, he's been okay. shuffled up high. It doesn't have any drafting part, it looks like. <laughs> The outside lines are about to go by. I'm assuming the four car had to back off its accelerator as it came off the corner. Something happened, and he lost momentum, and he lost about five or six spots because of it as Spencer is being pushed to the. He's put in trans in reverse and going to the garage. Ray, what's going on? Well, Benny, they came in just a couple of laps ago to put tires on this car, and again, we're having overheating problems down here. Jimmy said the car was getting very hot. They put tires on it, went out, ran two laps, and he said, I just broke the shock on the right rear. So the mount, they think, is broken, so he's gone behind the wall so that they can work on that. We hear a DJ, Dale Jarrett, is also talking about his car getting hot again. It's been over 240 degrees. So one more time, he dropped back out of that pack, and he's lost a lot of positions. They're talking about making another change on the front of this car when they pit, and we expect that in about five or six laps to see the 88 coming to pit road. And he and Ward Burt, I mean, he and John Andretti have been running second and third, and both of them dropped all the way back. I don't know if Andretti's having a similar problem or not, but he's back there in 33rd place. So. And then just five laps ago, Bill Elliott was in the front as Earnhardt gets a little bit squirrely there trying to pull out to make a move. The 20 car goes way up the racetrack, Benny. Oh, is there something up there? I mean, the same thing happened the last time with the leader. Bobby Hamilton came off the corner and all of a sudden goes high on the racetrack, lost momentum. Same thing has happened to Tony Stewart. There had been a report from some of the crews of some possible oil and that into the racetrack. And so now we've seen at least three cars. I wonder, I think said a moment ago, Bill Elliott was leading about six laps ago and now he has dropped all the way back to the 33rd position. They're about to come up on Darrell Waltrip and put, put a lap on him. And Earnhardt is going for the lead. Dale Earnhardt, Goodrich Chevrolet, he's there, he has it. Change number 24 here at Talladega. What about Bobby Hammond to jump? Jerry, you can see the guy back to the front. What happened with it? His belts came loose. So he was trying to tighten them up as he was driving. He kind of had to slow down just a little bit. Lost a little momentum. Now he's trying to work his way toward the front. One interesting note about Hamilton and the crew, the first pit stop, they took on only right side tires. The car has gotten tight in the course of this run. So Bobby said, hey guys, we have to take on four tires this next stop. I tell you, if my belt came with a 200 miles an hour, if you need more, you get the pit stop in the air. <laughs> I would stop and think I would <laughs> tighten them back up. And wow. Well, we're coming up on halfway, and we've had 24 lead changes. As I told you at the very top of the show, they've averaged since 1969 over 45 lead changes per race, and looks like we're going to beat that number again today. We have a, certainly have a good possibility of doing that. And for those of you who are recording this stop and thinking about when they may come back in, remember Rusty Walls was the very first one at 37. And we are now showing 98 laps complete. Pit stops took place under the green flag from lap 37 and 51. So any time now, the next handful of laps, they should be peeling off for green flag pit stops. Take a look at the no ball five for the of the money. One of those million dollar hopefuls leading. Jeff Gordon back in sixth, Martin 12th, Steve Park 27th, and Jeff Burton back in 36th position. Jeff Burton in the car to this running with continues to lose ground to the leaders. They're just now across the start finish line, 43.8 seconds behind the leaders. And uh, he's in terms of that man. And then the pit stops will begin here in earnest on lap number 99. Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd, Dave Blaney, 
Bill Elliott, let's go down the ring. Robert Yates racing cars come in together. Dale Jarrett gives him plenty of room on the wall, but Ricky Rudd was over the line just a little bit, and he's going to be awfully close to the inside wall. A little bit of a chassis change for Dale Jarrett as they clean the windshields on both sides. They go uh, half a pound down on the right front for Dale Jarrett, and no chassis change here for Ricky Rudd. Now to Bill Weber. No changes for Jeff Ford. Ford tires and fuel good stop. He's on his way. Jarrett rolls out behind him, followed by the 10. Stopping Bill Evans crew. Also, have a, they have a great stop in here. All the cars coming down pit road. Earnhardt, they do. There's Bobby Hamilton. Earnhardt Jr., 55 miles an hour. Head to you, John Curtin. Bobby Hamilton Jr. coming down into his pit as he gets counted in. It'll be a four tire change, no adjustments. In fact, that's what we should see from just about everybody. Is Tony Stewart pulls in his stall just behind him. Bobby Labonte also in. Work done on the right side for the board of the Stewart team. Robert Markins, the Jackman, swings around. One pump, gets it up. The tire's already coming off, going on to Bill Weber. For Earnhardt, it is four tires, fuel, extra man over the wall to clean the windshield. Working on the left rear, now he's out of the way. And Rusty Wallace pulls out a nearly clip Earnhardt. He's trying to leave pit road pit. Very close. I thought he was going to get it. I was looking at it as opposed to the monitor when they were coming out. I thought he was going to hit it. in the uh, tie four cars, getting his service and getting back on the racetrack. Well, we've had two pit stops, both under the green, and here is Ward Burton on pit road. John Kearney? Ward Burton is in for what we would assume would be a four-tire change. Remember, the car was running so hot earlier, about 280 degrees. They still haven't taken any tape off of the front grill, but when Ward was able to get out, now they do take a piece of tape off the front grill to get a little more air in there. He said it had cooled down just a little bit. A four-tire change for Ward Burton, also for Matt Kenson and Michael Waltrip. Just a moment ago, we saw the four-car Bobby Hamilton have trouble. Boo Whitaker changed that rear tire. Joe Nimick checks car. They throw it on the tire on there. He goes around to the left side. All right, left nuts are coming off. They pitch the other tire. Picks the gun up. Five left nuts are going down. And Hamilton had a, a slow pit stop. It'll be a four he tire had change. Trouble on the no left front. You see Ed McClure going over to clean the windshield. NASCAR is allowed an extra man across the wall. Robert Larkins lets the car down, brings that jack around. But when the front tire changer comes around and takes the tire off, Ed McClure is in the way. See, they got the tire in the way, and they could not get to the tire immediately, and it cost him about two seconds extra. It cost him about 20 positions on the racetrack. Wow. The last time around, he was being shown in the 22nd position, and he was right up there in the top five. In the that team is a four-time winner at Talladega, twice with Ernie Irvin and twice with Sterling Marlin as you watch Stacy Compton bring Ford Torres down pit road, and he was being shown as the leader, so one of the Rookie of the Year contenders in the Robestus Rookie of the Year competition. Stacy Compton in the pits, and now Ted Musgrave showing the way in the Bell South Chevrolet. And car number 01 is our leader. After 102 laps are in the books at Talladega. We'll be right back. Back at Talladega Super Speedway, we have just seen the caution flag for the first time today. Dave Marcus, 59 years of age, who qualified ninth and actually led in the early part, rolled his car, coasted down out of turn four, has been pushed out back to the garage area, apparently with an engine problem, and he will have to call it a day. They take the window net down, and now Dave will climb out. And Jerry, this is a huge break for Ted Musgrave in 01, Jeff Burton in 99, and Rick Mast in 14. They had not made a pit stop. They were almost to lap down before the leaders made their green flag pit stops, but this caution has saved them. They're going to be on the lead lap. Yeah, they'll be back at the tail end of the lead lap, but they would have been lapped if they would have pitted on the green. Let's go to Kiss and John. Ward Burton, who had just hit it under the green, decides to come in and pit again. The crew says Ward just wanted four new tires, so that's what they're going to do. They're also going to pull the finger off the left front because it was rubbing the left front tire to Bill Weber. 
unbelievable break for Jeff Burton. Unbelievable. It's four tires, a little bit of tape off the grill. He's on his way. Now he stalls and he had to get going. Ted Musgrave was pitted right in front of him. Musgrave had one, run out of fuel and requested to be pushed down pit road by Burton. He helped him out, then he was able to go around him. Ward is still on pit road. The 43 is also on pit road, getting left side tires. So a number of cars taking advantage of this caution to John. And Ward Burton's crew, you see Tommy Baldwin Jr. pulling out on the fender on the left front. What they, uh, it looks like there might have been just a little bit of contact to push it in, and there was a tire rub on that left front tire because you can see just how shiny it was around it. Back up to the booth as they sit Ward out. Well, Tommy Baldwin pulls that fender away as Ward Burton puts that Husk Barna Caterpillar Pontiac back in gear and will exit pit road. Back in just a moment. Back at Talladega, what a great, what a great crowd. Sherry, press record. So Sherry, you get the message, press record. He wants to keep this, but this is a great one to watch when he gets home, although he's watching it here live. And take a look at this crowd. Some 170,000 NASCAR fans have stood for much of this one and waved their hats and screamed and applauded. Folks, that's what he's all about. Look at that sea of people here at Talladega Super Speedway. Let's get on with John Curry. One update on Ward Burton. I said he had some contact with that left front. He actually, when pulling into his pit during the green flag pit stop, he actually made contact with his rear tire carrier, Mike Brown, and just kind of pushed in that left front fender. But Mike is all right. Uh, no harm, no foul, just a little incidental contact. As a Pontiac safety car makes a hard left-hand turn, Jeff Morton, who won it here in the spring from 36th starting spot. Folks, if you just joined us, he had to go to the back of the pack and start his 40th today. He's our leader. He gets up for the restart. Now. All right, stopping the crew chief for Jeff Burton, and he just 
joined us. The caution came out on lap 103, and Burton, Ted Musgrave, and Rick Mast had not put it, but they were able to put on the caution. And the others come back in, and that kept them from possibly losing a lap. They're surely losing a lap, so that's why they are still on the lead lap. And then we've got, uh, what, 35 cars still on the lead lap. 35 cars on the lead lap, and they're running within about uh, four seconds of each other, or actually 2.8 seconds of each other. And some of our spotters have told us that the, still that left front tower in 22 car might be rubbing a little bit still. And then look at Skinner down underneath the yellow line. Trying to get past Dale Earnhardt Jr. He does that with some drafting help from Bobby Labonte, a points leader. So Labonte all of a sudden now up in the fifth position. Dale Garrett had gone out to try to pass on the outside, and the whole line went by on the inside. So that, uh, what looked like was going to be a good move turned out to be a bad move. Here's Mark Martin up there by himself. They were running pretty good up there, making three wide. And there is awesome Bill Elliott trying to work his way back. Elliott is back there. So is John Hagrady. Cheerios Pontiac for the King Richard Petty. They had one, two for so long back. 30, 40 laps ago. And all of a sudden, Elliott's car is just not right. I don't know exactly what happened, what happened, but all of a sudden, anyway, Mike Skinner is hooked up with Bill Earnhardt Jr. And they are trying their best to take the lead. And Earnhardt Sr. and Rusty Wallace trying to hang on as you're taking a look right along right there with our Circuit City on board for points leader Bobby Lavani. He sits back there in about fifth position. Well, Bobby, we said earlier that he was riding, which was smart to do for a long time. To sit there and ride, get, get laps behind you. But now we're past the halfway point. Time to go. How about it, John? Well, Ned, I would guess you're absolutely right. During that last caution, Bobby was talking to Jim Maycott and the crew. And he said, guys, he says, I'm kind of sorry. He said, I'm just not having a very good game of chess right now. He said, I'm having problems picking out the wrong line. So obviously now, He's got his concentration going. I guess, he's, I guess he's got his game on, you might say. And you're picking the right line, it looks like to me, because he looks like he's headed toward the front. We mentioned a lot of these engine builders have flown back to their shops last night. Among those is Mark Cronquist, who built engines for Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart, both of Joe Gibbs cars. They flew back, worked much of the night, trying to see what the clock rate is going to do on these cars today with the smaller plate that they put on yesterday prior to happy hour. And obviously that work is paying off for the 18 car. On the lap 114, we'll check them as they come by. Still got a great battle going on for Lee, but this time it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to pass his dad. Skinner had taken the lead, but now Bobby Hamilton has worked his way back in front. He's on the outside. We got Earnhardt Jr. That's the 22 left front tires going for Evan Ward Burt's car. We mentioned it was still going a little bit. It was too much, and the tire is flat. What a job he did, Dad, to hang on to that car right in the middle. He's in the middle of like three cars with about seven eight right behind him. Yeah, he did that do a great crumbling. job. And, and, and caution is out. He'll race back to the flag where there's no, uh, no, no big deal here. But that, that could have been the big one. Bill? Drop back is because he was running with the 22. They were going to try and work their way to the front together. Elliott saw Ward was having a problem. His crew told him Ward was rubbing the tire. Elliott got out of the gas. That's why he went to the back. But he made the right decision. Now, as you ride along with our Husk Barna on board camera, tough break for Ward Burton, who had been at the front of the pack most of the day. Let's get Tommy Ball, one of the crews. He comes to a halt. Let's go down to John Curtin. And they're going to change the left side tires and course first, but you can see a lot of uh, aerodynamic damage to that left front where the uh, belt come off and just wrapped itself up and hit the, uh, not the uh, hood up from the inside. So they're going to have to work on that. Also, some of what was left of the tire of the tread is wrapped around the brake rotor. So now one of the crewmen trying to pull that away to get it off. Tommy Baldwin on the radio said, we got some time, we got some time. Just do your jobs, do your jobs. And now, now Tommy will actually get in and try and pull it out as it is stuck as the uh, pace car is in the middle of three and four. They now turn the wheel to try and make it a little bit easier access to get the rest of the tread out of that left front wheel. And it looks like, oh man, they're coming out of four right now. So they're quickly running out of time, having a problem pulling this out. 
Oh, now they finally do get it out. Now he tells him to turn the wheel to the right so they can get it on. Tommy Baldwin gets the uh, blood guts tied. Here comes the pace car. And Warburton is down and away, but he will have to come back in, change right side tires, and also try and smooth out that aerodynamic damage that was done to the hood and the fender. And here come the leaders down pit road with this caution coming on lap 114, lap 115. They peel off under the caution the pit. Let's go down the right. Well, guys, won't be four tires or two. It'll be four all the way around for the Yates cars because they think there is a strategy here. They may only have to pit one more time, and that may give them a chance to take gas only. Some guys will take two tires this time. Bill Weber? Dale Earnhardt on pit road. This will be two tires only. Two tires only. Getting into his pits at the far end of pit road to see the Algerian car manager. John Kernan says, strategy here for both the Yates car taking their four car And look at the one car. The one car, half the car is sitting on pit road. He just simply could not get into his pit. Finally, they changed the tires, and there is no penalty for that. If he makes an effort to do that, that's all that's required of him. If he gets his front tires. Okay, what happens when you cut a tire at 190 miles per hour? Let's listen. Watch this left front tire. The tire almost immediately stops turning. That tread comes off and wraps itself around the chassis, and almost immediately, as soon as we see the left front tire, it is not rolling. It's sliding across the racetrack. We still, I can't show you what I'm talking about. In just a moment, you'll be able to read Goodyear on that tire. See, it's not turning. Well, in the tough break, the uh, poor luck for Ward Burton on lap 114 brings out the second cost of the today. He is back on pit road. Mike West being shown as our leader. Back at Talladega Super Speedway here in Talladega, Alabama, working caution number two on the day. A tough break for Ward Burton, the left front tire being cut down. And just a moment ago, during the pit stops, a very, very close call. Ted Musgrave is sitting here, fuel only in his car. The red car of Scott Pruitt, he dodges Earnhardt as he comes in. He starts with his pit and all of a sudden has to turn left and runs in to the 0-1 car of Musgrave as he leaves and did some damage to the left front of Pruitt's car. He spent a lot of time on pit road trying to repair that damage and make sure that his fender wasn't rubbing the tire like Ward Burton's. All right, looking back at the Viagra Pontiac for Mike Bliss, the first race he has led in his NASCAR Winston Cup career. Back with more in just a moment. Back at Talladega Super Speedway in Talladega, Alabama. I'm Jerry Punch along with Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, Ray Dunlap, and John Kernan bringing you live coverage of the Winston 500. How about that 47th driver Mike Bliss is? to lead at least one lap this season. That is pretty competitive. He's just about everybody has. They're throwing in uh, 55 or 60 different drivers. Well, now we've had 15 different leaders here today, 31 leaders so far. That number might change as we go back to green flag racing. Rusty is trying his blessed best to block the 31 car. And looks like he's been able to succeed. Skinner could not get by the two. As a matter of fact, when he backed off the ball to his own line, he lost the rim and lost the spot. And I don't think Rusty, according to my records, has not, has not led today, but that could change here in about a half a lap. Well, he's going for it. He's got Dale Earnhardt Jr. there to push him on by. This car, Rusty's driving, finished fourth at the Daytona 500, finished third at Daytona in July. And he's getting a shove from a big Budweiser hood from Earnhardt Jr. And you know, it's sad, but I mean, Jim Spencer coming back out of the garage area at the end of the race. He's been out for a while. And Rusty Wallace becomes our 16th different driver to lead this one today after 120 laps are in the books. 
And we see Rusty about to lose the position as Bernard Jr. drives up on the outside. Kenzel now driving on the inside. The left is looking for going somewhere. Mark Martin wanted to follow his protege, but when he got to the third corner, he said, I better not do that. Rusty was in the way. He couldn't, couldn't get clear in there where he needed to be. Now he's going to try it on the end of the back. Now he's going to try it. Mark Martin down there making three wide. And the 32 car of Scott Pruitt with the to tire down that may have been that incident on pit road with him with contact. There's Pruitt and his tied Ford. The left front tire jammed up underneath the left side of that car. Heavy sheet metal that he heads back toward pit road. That's similar to what Jeff Gordon had yesterday when he cut a tire down in practice, and it, boy, it does a lot of damage. Ward Burton was lucky while he to not have more damage to his left front fender than he did have when he cut his tire down. You know why he was so lucky, Ned? Because the tread came off and stopped. He yeah, didn't keep true. flopping yeah. around and knocked yeah. the fender off. Yeah, good point. How about uh, our rookies in NASCAR Winston Cup competition? Our bestest rookie of the year leader, Matt Kenseth. The driver who won here in the spring started 36. That was Jeff Gordon. And Matt Kenseth started 36 today. You take a look at our Haviland serial scoring on this young man from Wisconsin as he leads it. Wow, 41st on lap 24, all the way to first. How about the NASCAR Winston Cup points leader, Bobby Labonte, third position. about how the Rush cars guys were laying back a little bit early on in the race, but now the right there at the front. The 17th, the 6th, the 99 is there. Bobby Labonte wants those five bonus points for leading a lap. And the 17th yeah. car right there gave himself up, I think, for Mark Martin. I want to say Bobby can lead it back to the strike and he'll get those five bonus points. And it looks like he will. Bobby Labonte, our most recent winner in NASCAR Winston Cup competition last Sunday at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Came in leading by 252 points with just five events remaining, four up to today. And Bobby Labonte is leading here with 65 laps to go at Talladega. Three Pontiacs up front, Bobby Labonte, John Andretti, and the 20 car, Bobby Labonte's teammate, Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart. And the Chevrolet back behind them. And another Pontiac. So Pontiac's running four out of the top five. The first Ford back there will be back in seventh spot. The big, big, the big Texaco star on the hood of Ricky Rudd. They fan out now. Renard Jr. tries to make a move. He's in into Bobby Labonte pits with John Kirk. Jerry, when Bobby crossed the line with the lead, his crew told him, hey, that's five points. That's five points. And Bobby Radio back and says, hey, guys, it's not over yet. <laughs> well, we've got 34 lead changes among 18 drivers, and it is the most we have had all year long, the most number of different drivers hits and lead all year long. We have been in Atlanta where we had 17 different drivers lead, and now we have broken that season record and set a new one. Thirty-six-year-old Bobby Labonte from Corpus Christi, Texas, finds himself four races and about 60 laps away from a Winston Cup title. Right now at Talladega, wider is better because we've got Pontiacs one, two, and three. And Bobby Labonte, John Andretti, and teammate Tony Stewart trying to hang over the top three spots. Now well, you talk about how a race can ebb and flow. Ray, give us an update on the 31 car. Well, Jerry, in the middle of pit road here where I'm working, Skinner's about the only guy that gambled on two tires that time. But when we restarted this race, he was running in second position. Now, he did get shuffled back a little bit, but I think the two-tire strategy may have been too big of a gamble. All the guys that took on four down here now have the option when they pit next time to either do two tires or no tires. And I think anybody that took two tires that last time may be in trouble. And I think Skinner is one of those that could be in trouble. If we stay green here, they'll have to pit with what? About, I'd say, 20 laps to go, right, guys? Well, that's right, but they must be... 
<laughs> you see the leader during they do take the lead, but Theron Arnold Jr. says, uh uh, that's mine. It's my spot. I want it. I'm going to take it. And then he's going to up there by himself. He doesn't have any help. That might cost him as Nadeau figures that out and said, let me get down and get me some help. As the fans are cheering, Earnhardt using some hand signals there, and that was Jerry Nadeau's radio. A spotter talking to Jerry. Michael Holligan and Chevrolet, as you watch it right along now on the Budweiser on onboard for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Battle for the lead. Looks like Junior's going to push that 36 car straight as right to the front. Coach Joe Gibbs and Coach, it looks like you might, as you're watching the monitor here, it looks like you might be holding your breath a little bit. In, in, in any of your Super Bowls while coaching the Redskins to the championship, did you ever have to hold your breath? Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. It's just a matter of where you wind up getting shuffled. To see him run three abreast like that, you know, it scares me. I think I'm going to find a quiet place to pray here for a while. How does it compare molding a championship race team to putting together a championship football team, or is there a good comparison? I said to everybody that, that you know, it's, it's almost exactly the same number of people. It's just as hard, if not harder. We've never won a championship over here, so that's what we're fighting for. That's why all this makes us so nervous, but it's exactly the same because you win with people. You don't win with cars or extra cars. That's how, how they have built a championship team, and we'll let him get back to watching the monitor so he can continue to hold his breath as we all are down here on Pit Road. 1996 inductee in the National Football League Professional Football Hall of Fame. Talking about Joe Gibbs, three Super Bowl victories and four trips. Well, Mike Skinner is pedaling toward the front or trying to right down left. How long that'll last, who knows? But boy, as he worked his way back up, you talk about ebb and flow. He went from 27 all the way up now where he might have a shot at taking the lead. Now, we haven't talked much about the guy running the second, Benny Parsons, but what a job. The uh, Terry Labonte's done a terrific job. Labonte started in 17th position, has worked his way up the second spot. Tony Stewart. Apparently a problem for the Home Beat Depot uh, Pontiac. Let's go to John. About a half lap ago, Tony Stewart radioed his crew and said, hey, she's loaded up, something, something's going on here. So they're bringing him in, they're changing all four tires. Should be able to go to the end of the race now, but it depends on how he comes out on the pack. As, oh, and he, he kills the engine, but he refires it and is on his way. So we'll see if he can catch up with the pack. He may be in, in big danger of losing a lap if he's out there running by himself, but he should be able to go the rest of the way. He's certainly going to lose a battle. There's no doubt about that. Here comes the pack off the corner, and he, about the time he gets up to speed, the pack will be coming to catch him. There he is going down to turn one, and here comes the big pack of cars. He's running about 80 miles an hour. They're running about 109 miles per hour. And of course, they're about three or four wide. <laughs> Terry Labonte 
winning that last lap. Led the race in the Kellogg's generation. Also back on pit road to car number seven, you Michael Waltrip fans. Back in the pits. And more from the Tony Stewart pits with John Curry. Jerry, the problem was the left rear, a few of the left that's would work their way loose because you could see on the wheel how the holes, instead of being perfectly round, they were kind of uh, oblonged out as they as the uh, the tire vibrated just a little bit. But they caught it, got him in before he had a problem, got the tire changed, the legs tied on this way, and it can go the rest of the way. Folks, we talked about a record race today. It has been 14 years since we've had 19 or more different drivers win the race. When did that happen? Right here at Talladega back in July of 1986. There have been 19 different drivers in this race today leading. we still got a ways to go. 52 laps. Here goes Tony Stewart going the lap down. Terry Labonte out front upon the outside. Now I see his teammate Bobby Labonte come up on the inside, try to get hooked up with the Home Depot Pontiac. Looking from high above, courtesy of the fine folks at Penzol. On our Penzol Copter Cam giving you a bird's eye view of this massive 2.66 mile facility. And folks, there are still 32 cars on the lead lap and they are within a second of the leader. That's how close it is with 51 laps to go. Four races remain after this one today. And 36 year old Bobby Labonte Trying to hang on to the championship on his brother Terry Bond. We'd like to go to Victory Lane at Talladega in today's Winston 500. Back with more live coverage in just a moment. Back at Talladega Super Speedway with Texas Terry showing the way. 140 laps in the books. 48 laps to go. If you just joined us, there are just four cars out of it. Kevin LePage has had engine problems after Jeremy Mayfield and Sterling Marlin. Dave Marcus lost the first cost to fly today on lap 103 with engine problems by Roll to a halt. The 26 car, Jimmy Spencer, had been off the race track with a bunch of shock He is back on the track some 29 laps behind. And the 32 car just a moment ago, Scott Pruitt, has gone behind the wall. He cut a tire and had some sheet metal and front end damage. They are working on his car, the tire for him. So far, we've had 38 lead changes. I told you, we averaged 35. A little bit more than that. One more lead change. Dale Brown, the three car, goes back to the last year of mine. And we see on the outside, Jerry Nadeau, trying to go by that way. Three deep, three wide, four. We've got three rows of cars, four rows of cars there. Last time we had this many drivers leading the race, I told you, was 14 years ago. On that day, in July of 1986, we had a first-time winner, Bobby Hiller, got his first Winston Cup victory. On board with Dale Leonard Jr., the Budweiser Chevrolet, as he looks back at a couple other Chevrolets. On your right, Mike Skinner. On your left, Jeff Gordon. All this is at 190 miles per hour. Nadeau comes down, tries to take the lead with help from Matt Kendall. That was Jerry Nadeau. Has not won a Winston Cup race. This is his 99th career start, dropping this year for Rick Hendrick. MichaelHolligan.com, Chevy. Clear by two, yeah. Kind of it's amazing to hear the how stable these cars look. At these speeds and running three wide. In the past, we've seen them run three wide, but, but you know the middle car was usually pretty squirrely, and sometimes even those on the inside would be squirrely as well. But these cars seem pretty stable. I guess it's because of all that downforce that they put on with the new How did these guys just drive by in the middle? Was it Kendrick that helped these guys? Bernard Jr. They drive by Nadeau. All of a sudden, is Nadeau have a problem? No, it doesn't look that way. You could just just the best to make it. But it is. It, it worked better for that person in the middle. And then if we had watched Dale Earnhardt Jr. come up to that middle, it's time, it's time, it's time to get to get shuffled back. He jumps back in that throttle and pushes the more engine and just roars back toward the front. And Elliot Sadler, he goes blowing by and takes the lead. Well, so he's left down. Oh, I'm sorry, Yeah, yeah he made a nice catch pit stop not long after the green came out. Oh, so. thank you. According to the 
scoring, he's not a lap down. I swear I thought I saw him come out of the pits, but maybe not. Maybe I'm seeing things here with all those signal cars out there. Well, anyway, Mark Martin, wherever he came from, he's got old news. Forget about the 21, because he's old news. <laughs> Martin led so many laps here back in the spring, back in April. In fact, he led the most laps, seven times for 98 laps, only to be shuffled and finished back in 15th position. You know, we cover happy hour at most of these NASCAR races that ESPN does, and Mark Martin usually practices more laps than anyone else. But yesterday, he only practiced 14 laps, and as the kids he came in, he was more than one, he said, hey, so far, he hasn't wrecked. Jimmy's always a man of few words, but he gets, he gets his point about it. Yes, he does. <laughs> 43 laps to go here at Talladega. I'm Jerry Parts along with Benny Parsons, Ned Jett, and a great crew on pit road. Bill Weber, John Kerner, and Ray Dunlap covering action, and there will be one more pit stop. When it'll happen, well, if we stay green, we're looking at about 20 to 45 to go. And they have to make that final stop. I tell you what, you would have thought when that tire shredded on the left front of Ward Burns' car and it stopped rolling and he banged it on the left, trying to get back to the it would have hurt the car in some way, shape, or form. But it doesn't seem to have hurt it a bit because here he is in second spot. Yeah, that's great, I never thought he'd been able to be that competitive again after that. Exactly. If you're sitting on the sofa at home, you looked at your wife and said, where'd he come from? Which is exactly what we said a moment ago. Laps are winding down. Mark Martin is our leader here at Talladega. Stay with us. Back at Talladega, patience beginning to wear thin as the laps wind down. Here at Hold Your Breath, NASCAR action, Talladega stop. And holding your breath, there goes Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the high side. Here comes Gordon on the inside. And Johnny Benson trying to help Mark Martin go through. Trying to help Jeff Gordon go by Mark Martin, I should say. And I'm telling you what, they, these guys go to the back, they go to the front. They go back to the back, back to the front. Jeff Gordon has been back and forth more than you ever did. Second lead change here at Talladega. We had 45 lead changes last week at the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Uh, in, in that race, which I think was the rest of the season. Now we talked about the 22 car of Ward Burton, the problems he had, and now he is back up there among the leaders. Let's check in his pitch with John Kearney. And I'm with Ward's crew chief, Tommy Baldwin. And Tommy, considering all the aerodynamic work you had to do to that car, are you surprised that it's running as well as it is? Yeah, it's kind of, uh, you know, that left front fender is still flopping around in the air. We're hoping for a caution so we can fix it a little bit better. But, uh, you know, car's real strong. Terry Elledge and the motor guys did an excellent job putting the motor, the motor together today. And uh, hopefully we get caught in the right trap with this Caterpillar fire and get back up front, get a good pit stop, and uh, see where we end up with a beat-up car. I know you might want to take that beat up part to the wind tunnel, check the numbers. It's the configuration for the tunnel next year. It's running so good. I highly doubt it. The car's pretty much beat up, balance about six inches in the air, hood's all beat up, fenders flopping. Uh, it's not very good right now. He's been going on the uh, radio. Don't do something I can do right now. You just have to drive and hang on. All right, well, uh, we'll let you get back to watching the race, Tommy. Jerry? Thanks, John. Watch it. The car number eight. Look at the left side of your screen there. That's Jerry Nadeau. He's been running way up on the very top of the racetrack. And the 10 car, Johnny Benson. Remember Benson from the season opener? He came within four laps of winning the Daytona 500. Well, they've got back to that battle for about this spot. They've got them all lined up three wide, but every one of them has someone on the back front of the hill. But right now, the battle is for, I guess, second spot with Bernard in the middle. Dale Jr. in front of his dad. And on the outside is Maydew, on the inside is a 10 car of Benson. Coach, I told you at the top of the show, if you have seat buff on your sofa, you better buckle up. And imagine if you're on the edge and you'll see the home what these guys are feeling like. 31 cars, two seconds apart, with less than 40 left to go at 190 plus miles an hour, folks. This is NASCAR racing at its finest. And as Ned mentioned, the 
fans were raving last week about that great race from Rose Motor Speedway. 46 lead changes among 13 different drivers. Well, today we have had 43 lead changes among 20 drivers, and we still have 37 laps to go. We talked at the first broadcast about the middle lane maybe was not the place to be, but now it's working very well. Man, it, it just seems to ebb and flow. It seems like it doesn't work, and all of a sudden some, something happens and it does work. The outside line, we talked about how it didn't work. And all of a sudden, we see Paul just get more on the outside. As we see Dale Earnhardt going the inside of his son to take over that second spot. Fans are on their feet screaming and waving hats. They're watching what you're watching as they come flashing by. And now we'll watch them above, courtesy of the folks at Penzol and our Penzol Copter Camp. Here they come, a gaggle of cars, 31 of them. Johnny Benson was running second just a moment ago. He's on the inside with not really any drafting help. That time by, he had fallen back to the 10th position, and Jeff did losing more spots. About Jeff Burton penalized 15 seconds for a crew member over the wall. Back to 40 second spot. Now he's right back among this group battling for the lead. He had a huge break when he got a caution flag. And uh, he's right back in the game. We are hearing 10 to 15 laps. The final pit stops will be coming. We'll let you catch your breath. We'll catch our breath. And we will come back and show you those final pit stops. Critical pit road area as the crew members watch and wait to know their work can impact the winner. Back in a moment. Well, welcome back to Talladega Super Speedway. Take a deep breath and watch what's about to unfold here in these final laps. 44 lead changes among 20 drivers. We still have one pit stop to go. That's coming up in about seven or eight laps. And there's the points leader up close and personal, that big interstate battery's hood. For Bobby Lavani, right behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, first car on the pit road will be the car number 10, the Aaron's Rents Pontiac for Johnny Benson, James Benson Company. Will they do a gas and go? Let's watch. At least right side tires. Now they will not have to have a fuel tank, full tank of fuel, because they only have about 20 miles to go. But they're going to change all four. I, think, I, I really believe that Benson's car all of a sudden they lost the handle on the car, so they're going to make some adjustments and change four tires. And, and he can get lucky, and all the rest of the cars have to make their pit stop before to say a caution flag comes up, because he is going to lose the lap. Pedaling hard as he can, but obviously with that play, here come the leaders at 190, and Benson is probably less than 100 miles an hour coming off of pit road. Thirty left from the checkered flag at Talladega Super Speedway. Now there's the car number 94. A moment ago, we were talking about Bill Elliott back there. He is. The last car, or was the last car in the lead lap, but he's back there with the 88 car for Dale Jarrett. you got to wonder what they're doing. Well, I think they were riding. They saw all that action going on up in front of them, and I think that they said, hey, let's just sit back here and ride in case that big one happens. You know, we'll be in position maybe to to uh, get slowed down. The DJ, I think, has decided to punch his, and he's uh, coming back up through there. He must have changed the songs in the CD player. He's just driving a totally different tune this lap than he was about the last seven or eight laps. The 10 car pit stop coming in early, right on left. But Jerry Johnny came on the radio, said he had a bad vibration, thought he was getting a right rear tire going down. They are checking him right now, and it appears that all the tires do have air in them. But uh, hey, if it doesn't feel good out there, probably the best move for the driver to bring it in so it doesn't go in the fence. Junior showing the way here at Talladega as we get closer and closer to pit stops. Bernard Junior, a two-time winner already this year. One at Texas back on April 2nd. One at Richmond back 
on May the 6th. There's the second pack led by Ricky Love. He's gone over two years now since his last victory. Coming at Martinsville back in the spring of 98. And right now, Bob has got the 11 Single file, single file, has his teammate Tony Stewart behind him. He knows that Tony's a lap down, and he knows Tony's not going to do something to him. Take a chance on hitting the 18 car, so life is grand for Bobby Labonte right now. Well, the crews are talking about waiting a little bit for pit stops, so we'll take a quick break and come back and cover those final pit stops of the day. Green flag pit stops coming up. Earnhardt Jr., Bobby Labonte, they do Earnhardt. That's a top four. Super Speedway. There have been no pit stops among the leaders. A moment ago, the 99 car on pit road for a stop. He made two right side tire change with all the possibility of tire going down. Now, coming up next, the PGA Las Vegas Invitational. Tom Byram, our leader, with the three-way tie for second spot. We're going out to the Las Vegas Invitational PGA event at the conclusion of our live coverage of NASCAR action from Talladega. During that break, the 99 car of Jeff Burton made, I guess, an unscheduled pit stop. Team's right side tires and is now back on the racetrack. Now, he was going to have to stop anyway, Benny, but the fact that he did not have anybody to run with once he got back out on the racetrack, and the leaders are coming up on him now to put him a lap down. And so he's lost perhaps a second lap to the leaders. Of the so he's going to stop behind him, but still is going to hurt him because they'll have cars to run with. There's a look at Jeff Burton and the leaders right behind him. Take a look at that, the bumper cam on the parts. Plus, uh, see, here comes Earnhardt Jr. coming right at him. Bill Weber. Well, Jeff Burton, as the uh, leaders roar by him, had to come in. He felt he had a vibration. They changed right side tires. Looked at the lefts. The left looked okay. They took the rights off. The rights appear to be fine. So Burton had a vibration. That's why he pulled it on him. But they told him when he gets on the track to try and hang with Tony Stewart because Stewart does not have to stop. And the car number 36, Kenny Schrader. He'll be having to make a pit stop anyway, but he's obviously slowing down uh, from that lead pack. And this, this probably is going to be an unscheduled stop. He's slowing down considerably and did not go down pit road. Well, he's down in one and two right now. And if you look at my microphone down there, it's uh, sounding to me like it might be on seven cylinders. But uh, if Schrader has a problem and he chose not to make a pit stop, evidently, he feels like he's going to ride it out. And we've been told it definitely is an engine problem. So good here is Benny on hearing that car when he came by. 23 laps to go. Any time now. These cars, we last pitted on lap 115. So 50 laps to go, they made their pit stop. We haven't seen them go much more than 50 laps here today. And they don't need to stretch it because all they're used to them and getting their fuel go to the end of the way. It'll be interesting to see who changes tires and who doesn't. The gas and fuel will have how many two tire changes. And they'll on our. Dale Earnhardt, the three car, has been up front all day long, but right now, he seems to be struggling. He's falling back to the 19th position. So, if he does have a handling problem, there we see Earnhardt, can he make a gas and go? And he's probably going, if he has a handling problem, he's probably going to have to change four tires and put that splash of fuel, which will take him a lot longer than some of these other cars. And remember, Earnhardt only changed two tires on that pit stop on lap 115. He chose to change two. The 94 car, well, he didn't make a tire change. He needed it in a two car of Rusty Long. So that may explain why the 94 car is going for the back of the pack. Mm -hmm. There's a 27 car. Good effort by Barry Dotson, that whole Jack Birmingham, Eel River Racing Group. Some of the guys, some of the folks were saying that maybe Bliss only took fuel the last time, did not change tires at all. I'm really not sure if it's two tires or, or no tires, but whichever. He's doing pretty good job. At this racetrack at Talladega, tires has never been a problem as far as handling is concerned. A big problem like he is in some other racetracks. He saw some arms waving in the windows that are indicative that maybe some guys may be slowing down. We'll see if anybody peels off down the pit road. This time, they still come roaring by. And the 36 on the way. Oh, we got a run. Tommy Hamilton in the inside wall. Jeff Gordon down pit wall. Mark Martin loops it around. The 
94 car, and Bill Elliott makes it by. Oh, and heavy damage to Bobby Hamilton's car. And tough break for Jeff Burton and Tony Stewart, who were not going to have to stop. The others were going to have to stop soon on under green flag conditions. And here's Jeff Gordon. He was coming down 10 road. He'll probably be up near the front of the pack. He'll probably be leading the race this time when he starts. Probably will. Yeah. They'll have to all come down a pit. I tell you what, pretty good. He wrecked on the pit road and had to stop foot fuel in. Not bad. Good break. He's had bad breaks. There's Bobby Hamilton getting out of his car. See a lot of damage to that. Chevrolet. There's a six car of Mark Martin. Some damage in the left rear. The speculation maybe some cars slowing to come on the pit road may have caused this little back up here. And he spins up in turn four. So we can see what happened just a moment ago. Come off the corner, there's Hamilton on the inside, and the car on the inside is going to make a pit stop. I guess yeah. that's Mark Martin was going to make a pit stop. And Jeff Gordon had already decided to make a pit stop. He's not involved in the I thought he was involved in the crash, and he was coming down pit road. Mm -hmm. So that was a tremendous break for him. And, and after Jeff Gordon entered pit road, the pit road closed, he could get that fuel illegally. Now for Mark Martin's onboard camera. Up in turn three in the middle of three and four. Martin puts it back in gear once again. Well, you can see the closing right. We see Mark Martin up on the outside, and he goes down between two cars. And Hamilton had just such a run, he closed on him so rapidly that when Mark decided to go in the pits, there was nothing that Bobby could do except run the back of it. Mike Bliss and what is that, Bickle, the 60 car, the black car there of Rich Bickle, and, and the 27 car, I believe, got together and a little bit uh, of squirreliness there. Right, one more angle. We'll take a look from the outside of turn four to see the contact there. There's the 27 and the 60, and that's talking about as they both try to slide by. Well, they have closed pit road because they're still working to be able to get some of the cars off of pit road to get the Bobby Hamilton car pulled in as you watch uh, again the replay. Trying to get all of pit road completely clear before they open up pit road and let these guys come scrambling on for that final pit stop. Back at Talladega Super Speedway, I'm Jerry Punch along with Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, Ray Dunlap, and John Kernan in the pits. Now, a moment ago, these teams made what was hopefully their final pit stop of the day. Take a look from Boo Whitaker's standpoint. He's a, he's a rear tire changer on Joe Nemechek's car. So stop, stop, stop. Why is the Boo changing tire? Oh, it's gas only. Boo stays over and just cheers. Our Coke Pit Summary shows you how about a big gain for Jeff Gordon. Wouldn't you expect it in 26th out first? Well, we'll tell you how that happened a moment ago. He was actually coming on the pit road when the caution came out. Rudd, fourth to second, first to third for Earnhardt Skinner. Gained nine spots, and Bobby Labonte lost three. Folks, watch this. Coming off the corner, Mark Martin, Bobby Hamilton make contact. And Jeff Gordon was pitting. I thought that he had gone down pit road to avoid the crash. He was making a pit stop. The caution comes out because of those guys spinning. Jeff Gordon is in the pits, makes his pit stop gas only. Now, if those guys had really been sharp, they would have changed four tires because he would have still been leading the race with four fresh tires. They had plenty of time to do that, but I, they were primed in position to put gas in it. That's right. They were geared to put gas only, and again, probably did not have four tires ready to go. I, I wouldn't have either. It's only after after start five minutes later yeah. thinking about why the good tires are. Yeah. Uh, Green flag waves once again. Jeff Gordon and Warren Carrie will turn to pull off the Talladega sweep. And Jerry, there you see Michael Walker down there. That was a man right now. He and John Benson, who are all those cars, plus Jeff Burton and Tony Stewart were set to go the rest of the way. And uh, others are going to have to stop under green for this incident. So that's the thing right now. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Bernard Jr., Skinner, Bobby Labonte, the cars leader, Rusty is there. Still 27 cars on the lead lap with 15 laps to go at Talladega. So if something 
what happens to your car line down there on the flat tire, you're still going to have a bad finish. You're still going to finish 28 or worse. If they all run to the end, 188 laps, and they might not. Ricky Rudd looking to the inside. Rudd took on fuel only, no tire changes. A little mixing it up there in the back, as you see. Say he's been riding and he's been racing. The Tony Stewart got it on the inside of Ricky Rudd. Ricky didn't need that, but it helped. Uh... Oh, Bobby and Bonnie and Jeff Gordon almost get together. And now Gordon was a leader as they cross the line. He's in the middle, going back to about 10th spot. And the car's going every place on the outside, inside of him. Now, Dale Jr. is in the game. He has two wins, but he has not had a top 10 finish since Dover back in on June 4th. He has struggled the past two and a half months in Winston Cup competition. Let's check it with Ray. Now, guys, Dale Jr. just came on the radio and he said, Tell Bobby to hit me really hard, and maybe uh, the two of us can bump draft and get away from this group. Tell him come up and give me a shot in the bumper. <laughs> Ned, what do you think? Would you want to be leading or in second spot? I don't know. I, we've seen I some passes made off the yeah, easy. Yeah, we have. But and we've uh, seen some that made very difficult. Yes, we have. I think it would depend. I think I'd rather be leading. Really, I'd rather be leading on that last lap. I probably would probably wind up and be wrong, but they're going to be racing for that second spot, and that's going to help the leader. Well, look at this mess, Ned. Up on the high side is Terry Labonte hung up there. Behind him is Earnhardt. Saw Steve Park get a little bit loose a moment ago and wobbled in the middle of the corner. And that pins on Chevrolet, and he held on. Now we have 46 lead changes among 20 drivers, tying the most lead changes here in the year 2000. Last week's race at Lowe's Motor Speedway, they had 46 lead changes among 13 drivers, and Bobby Labonte won that one. Our second starting spot, and right now Bobby is running second. I think he likes his position there. He's been in second for a number of reasons. Oh, and Gordon goes down on the apron of the racetrack to pass Matt Kirk, or I should say, to attempt to pass Matt Kirk. He has not been able to pull it off yet. Put a blade on that DuPont Chevrolet. He can mow the grass next time out. He's dead near the grass on the apron of the racetrack. Nemechek trying to figure out how to get by the 21 car. On that inside, he goes down the middle with help from Mike Bliss. And that just might work. It looks like he's going to. single bone in his body says quit. He will fight him for the checkered flag way. You know, I think when I said that he had just come out of the pits, I think that he might have fallen under the same grandfather's rule that Jeff Gordon did and that he was not penalized for, for pitting when the pits were closed because he came on down pit road and he got his service done. Now, Rodney Wise have told him it was 10 to go. And now, if you've got a gun, it's time to fire it. And Rusty somehow stuck that Miller Light Ford between Lima Jack and the 55 car of Kenny Walsh, and maybe it was a 22 car. I don't know. I didn't think there was room, but Rusty went in there, and sure enough, the ocean party. <laughs> Just touching that, got his foot riding on the brake, just in case. But he needs to break quickly. Last 
Lewis and 10 laps to go, and now 27 cars, two and a half seconds apart. It's still anybody's race at Talladega. Look at Mark Martin coming high, way high up off the turn four. He's got a little bit of help from Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon back there. They have come three wide through three and four.
less than three laps to go. Who's going to win it? 47 lead changes, 21 different drivers. Mark Martin trying to plow his way through a minefield of race cars at 190 miles an hour. And here comes Omar. He's motioning the 55 car of Kenny Wallace. Give me a jump. Come on, Kenny. Give me a jump. And Earnhardt is going for the lead. And listen to this crowd of 170,000 strong. Richard Thomas, both his cars running round two as he comes for the white flag. His teammate, Joe Nemechek. Nemechek at the pole center. And Kenny Wallace has likewise never won a Winston Cup race. Three Chevrolets on the final lap at Talladega. 2.7 million and a million dollar bonus for Dale Earnhardt if he can hang on. The no ball five contender, Mr. 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 Take his tip to win victory on Talladega in the Winston Fire Rick. The crew has a table class to start finish now. And Carl slipping and sliding everywhere across the racetrack as the checkered flag wave. The 22 is involved. Ward Burton was involved. The nine car was sliding. The 44 of Steve Grissom was sliding. AC Compton was involved. And there, that big fist on the one that Arnold pulls up and says, thank you, Kenny Wallace. Because Kenny was right on his bumper and gave him the shove, and the shove actually was right by Earnhardt's teammate, Mike Skinner. Let's go down with Earnhardt Pitton here from his car owner, Richard Childress. Guys, you will not believe it. Richard Childress walked over and gave Danny Lawrence a big old kiss. Is that the most unbelievable race you've ever seen? Unbelievable, but it was Kevin Hamlin. His back's hurting so bad, he can't, he, he, you can't touch him. Hey, the race fans today got the race they deserve. This is for the race fans. Good wrench, everybody. Talladega has been Dale Earnhardt's track, but that may be the most impressive run I've ever seen. That was wild. You know, we never gave up. He wanted some tires to tighten him up. It was just wonderful. Hey, I got to thank this whole race team. Mike Skinner done a super job today in the Lowe's car. You know, it's... He's going to win his race. Absolutely. What an unbelievable finish, guys. Well, the most lead changes in over a decade, the most leaders in 14 years. And if you're a NASCAR fan, you love this one. If you weren't a NASCAR fan, you became one today. But 170,000 strong stood and cheered. They've got to be exhausted. They have, many of them had them set down all day long. Let's take a look at what happened here in the final seconds of this one at Talladega. Well, they go across the line, and somewhere back here on that five abreast is just going to catch up with them. We see Rich Bickle go sideways, the 22 car. I think I see the one car of Steve Park going around. And then all the cars get obscured in the smoke, and I can't tell who's who Ward, what. Ward Burton is definitely in it. He's getting his car back to the car. Here's Ward, you come down to the line. Too many cars trying to get in the same place. Jeff Burton was here involved. Let's see. Comes off turn four. Don't know goes by the line. No, he, he did save a race car. Yeah. Well, here's the way they were. They came across in this cluster of race cars coming for the checkered flag. But the 32nd annual Winston 500 is history. And the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt, is on his way to victory lane. They scramble, they 
Lee Cook stays sharp, and the checkered flag had already waved. We'll be back in just a moment. Today, a 49-year-old seven-time Winston Cup champion would not be denied. He had come seven times with no bowl table, but had never won the million-dollar bonus. But today, he will win the million-dollar bonus and the lion's share of a record $2.7 million purse. Get out of our Hasbro NASCAR Heat Winner Circle. Here's Bill Lowe. Just a couple of big winners and two new millionaires. Well, we're not already had a little bit of money. But he's a winner at Talladega for the 10th time in fantastic fashion. I have seen you celebrate before, but this was pretty wild. Come on up here, Frank. <laughs> Be careful with him. I, uh, it was wild. I didn't. I didn't have any any thought that I'd have a chance at winning this race, starting where I did on that restart. Boys, as we kept working away and got on the outside, Kenny Kenny Wallace really worked hard with us, and uh, he done a good job. Uh, I don't think we better got back up there if it wasn't for Kenny. How he, did you get back up there? He stayed with me uh, once we got together. He stayed with me, and we he pushed me to the outside of them guys and. I had to beat Mike Skinner, but I had to beat him for a million. You were very vocal yesterday, Dale, that you don't particularly care for this rule package. Did it frustrate you during the day? Oh, it was very frustrating. Nobody could stay in front, and it was a chess game of getting there and staying there, and it just, just worked out for us to be there at the right time. Have you ever won the Winston Million Dollar Bonus before? It's the first time I've won it. I've been, a, been a eligible several times, so be good going to Vegas now with a million bucks in my pocket, huh? And obviously you did it with a crew chief that suffered a racing injury last night, Dale. Yeah, uh, Kevin, uh, he's a monster truck driver, and he, I think he beat Stone, Tony Stewart, but he broke his back as doing it. He broke a vertebrae in his back, but he'll get better by next week, I bet. Well, congratulations on your win, a million bucks, and again, eligible for the million at Las Vegas. Well, I appreciate it, and all, all the good wrench folks that stand behind us, we appreciate all their support. Grandkids back home, uh, Kelly, my daughter, and uh, Carrie, my son, and all, all the kids. See when go. At the beginning of this race, we told you he asked Kevin Hamlin if he won. Kevin said, I did, and so did Earnhardt. And he gets a big hug and kiss from Teresa. And how about Richard Sturz, 45 years of age from Mount Savage, Maryland? He won a million also because he was paired with Dale Earnhardt. Seven time Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt gets his 10th career victory at Talladega Super Speedway. What an effort in those final laps as he was able to sweep by and take the win. Back with more from Talladega in a moment. Couple of big winners and... Back at Talladega, Alabama. Now we can take a deep breath and take a look at the unofficial results today. There were 26 cars finished on the lead lap. They alone hard for the winner. Kenny Wallace equals his best ever career finish. Joe Nemechek third, Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte rounding out the top five. <laughs> look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Led there just a couple laps ago, finishes 14th. And there you see the 26 cars that did finish in the lead lap. And those four, 27 through 30th, one lap down. Steve Grissom had a great run going in the Hot Wheels Pontiac involved in that bumping incident as they crossed the uh, came to the checkered flag and that cost him a few spots. Take a look at Rick Mast and the Conseco Pontiac finishing a lap down in 31st. As the celebration is ongoing in Victory Lane, the Winston Noble Five million dollar bills flying around. Now, what about the point standings with four lap, four races to go? Earnhardt moves up a spot in front of Jeff Burton, 210 points back of Bobby Labonte. Burton falls back to third. Dale Jarrett is fourth. And Ricky Rudd now moves in into fifth spot. And the guy who finished second, equaling his best ever career finish, is standing by with John Kerner. And Kenny Wallace talking things over with his teammate Joe Nemechek and Kenny. That close to that first win, those four tires that you took in the last stop really made a difference, huh? Yeah, well, how about this, you know, one uh, second, third finish for me and Joe, but, you know, I mean, it was just a deal where it was vintage. You know, here I am trying to win the race, and I think I, I'm trying to get underneath Earnhardt through the, uh, you know, the tunnel turn, or not tunnel turn, the short shoot here, and uh, he comes down in front of me, and 
I'm thinking, my God, I have no choice but now to help this guy win and then settle it when we get better. And I knew better than to hit him going through the trial over here and get him sideways. So I just couldn't believe what, how much Joe was helping me. And I was just ramming the heck out of Earnhardt. But it was hitting him square. And uh, hey, uh, me and Nemchuk won Earnhardt that race. I think he owes us half of that no bull money. But you, he was thanking us at the end there. <laughs> what do you think about that, Joe? I think we need to get half of that money, too. You know, that's uh, we help push him by. But no, I was helping Kenny there at the end. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a good weekend for for the whole Andy Petrie racing team. You know, our Oakwood home Chevy sitting on the pole, finishing third. Kenny finishing second. It's, it's just a good day. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to push Kenny by Earnhardt, but he was starting trying to break the draft. And uh, there was just, there was not, if we could add another couple laps, there might have been something, but then the rest of the pack would have been back. So I'm just glad this race is over. Yeah, yeah everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, guys, back upstairs. All right, those two guys, teammates finishing second and third. Great day for Andy Petrie Racing, Jerry Vess, engines, and that whole crew. And the celebration is ongoing. Look at all the dollar bills on the ground there. Dollar bills everywhere on the ground in Victory Lane. And how about sheet metal on the racetrack? As a checkered flag wave, we had cars slipping and sliding. Here comes Steve Wilson, car number one of Steve Park and others. Back with more from Talladega in a moment. Well, the Woodson 500 is history. Take a look at a couple of millionaires there in Victory Lane. Right of your screen, Earnhardt. And to his immediate right, Richard Sturtz out of Mount Savage, Maryland. Let's check in down on the garage area with Ray. Well, one Earnhardt stands in Victory Lane with a million bucks, but another one's pretty happy because you had an awesome race car today. Yeah, we did. It's been a while since we had a car as good as that. Uh, we got to lead some laps. I don't know if it's just because everybody else didn't want to, but we was up front for a while and uh, trying to think about how we you know, going to run him last two or three laps, and Mike Skinner got up there and mixed it up with us. And uh, I tried to get get him on apron. He was now or never, and uh, it was my decision. We probably could have finished in the top five or six if I'd have just kind of rode behind him, but I wanted to win. And uh, we come home 14th, but we're still happy. Would you rather have not been the leader there with two to go? No, I was happy with leading uh, the race, uh, you know, getting some laps and uh, – Looking good. I mean, that's what it's all about, no matter, no matter where you finish. Hey, and there's a big group of press around here, and that's good news for Dale Jr. As I said, he had not had a top 10 finish since the beginning of June, June 4th at Dover, Delaware. Pretty miserable June, July, and August, but what a run he had today. But that won't be the discussion of the year now, so it'll be this one, another million-dollar winner. Back in a moment. to John Curtis. And I'm with the points leader, Bobby Labonte. Bobby, for a while there, it looked like you might pull off the victory, but at least you got out of here okay, still with a 210-point lead. Well, that was our goal for the day, uh, finish this thing, and uh, never know what happens. And, uh, you know, the guys did a good job uh, in the pits. Um, did a good job <clears throat> working on it before we got here. We changed the motors this morning because we thought we had something a little bit better with the new plate rule. And, uh, you know, we just uh, rode around there and uh, you know, just watched things, see who was the fastest car. It looked like the eight car was the fastest. And, uh, I had my eyes set on the back, his back bumper. I thought that would be the place to be, and uh, uh, he made a move on Skinner. I guess it was there with one to go. He thought it was the last lap, and that, uh, that caused a big wreck, and the outside line got us. So we slipped back to 12th, but uh, there's a lot worse things in the world, a lot worse things in this life than uh, finishing 12th today. As far as the championship goes, four races remaining, are you starting to feel, feel comfortable and in command? No, never do. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> never have yet. I put it that way. Uh, I don't really. I haven't been in this position a whole lot. So, but we do have uh, some races left to go, and uh, you know we're excited about all of them. Uh, we we like our chances at every race that we go to, and uh, especially after we got out of here. All right, a uh, 12th place finish for Bobby Labonte, still leading the points by 210. Jerry, now you take a look. There were six different positions that changed among the top 10 today, with four events remaining. And we'll have the Winston Cup Series season finale coming your way from Atlanta Motor Speedway, the Napa 500, on November 19th. Back to wrap it up in a moment. Winning at Talladega is a tall order. Even at this massive facility, traffic can be treacherous. This day is nothing but a high-banked, high-speed, high-stakes game of chance. Split-second decisions can mean the difference between winning and hitting the wall. And today, Dale Earnhardt had courage, confidence, cooperation, and a whole lot of luck as he takes home the million dollars. For Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, Ray Dunlap, and Bill Weber, I'm Jerry Punch. Once again, congratulating the seven-time Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt, on his dramatic win in this 30-second running of the Winston 500.
Coming up next, the PGA Las Vegas Invitational. Now let's go watch a Roger Twible. It was a three-way tie. So long, everyone, from Talladega.